William McMichael telling the paper, quote, I got the most hated man in college football right now. He's my new defensive coordinator, unquote. It's time. It's time. Tuscaloosa's longest-running sports show. The biggest goal of our team, especially in the first half. We at Bama, we're trying to be the best. Always is to win a national championship. Something cool to look back on. We don't want to waste a failure. You're inside the game. John Mechie on the ground. Appreciate your interest in the game. On your home for Alabama sports. Alabama wins. Tide 100.9. And streaming on the Tide 100.9 app. Powered by Tuscaloosa Toyota. Now, now, here's your award-winning host, Ryan, Ryan Fowler. T-Town, Tide 100.9. Remember to download the Tide 100.9 app. It is a free download. Android, iPhone, Google Play. Simply enable the Tide 100.9 skill and be able to dial in with everything that we're able to do right here on the game. We are 15 days away, 15 days away. Can you believe it? Tomorrow, one week away from college football, two weeks away, away from Alabama Crimson Tide football and the final scrimmage of this Crimson Tide fall camp is upon us. I mean, we are here. I mean, you can almost smell it. Hopefully that is a little bit of energizing to you as we approach, you know, I, I want to go ahead and I want to put a disclaimer out there, okay? Uh, this is for all the ladies uh, that listen to us. Uh, if you've got a honeydew list, you better get it done this weekend, okay? Because if you've got some things that need to be accomplished, I don't know, uh, painting the wall, painting the garage, uh, cleaning out the garage, doing some yard work. You either get it done this weekend or next weekend, or you're probably not going to be able to get it done. So it's one of those things that if you think that you're going to be able to accomplish uh, all these projects, um, hey, you got a couple of more days to do it, and then it'll be uh, downtime until, well, for the college football season, because you look at the college football playoffs and how that runs together. I was about to say you might have a little bit of a break in December, but with the new playoff structure, I don't think you're going to have any time. So uh, maybe January the 21st, which will be after the national title game uh, on that Monday. Hey, we're always powered by Tuscaloosa Toyota, TuscaloosaToyota.com, the Corolla 3.99 APR for 36. How about a Highlander? You can lease one for 429 plus a $1,000 loyalty cash, including the RAV4 3.99 APR for 36. And if you look at the Camry, the 2025 Camry, 3.99 APR for 36. The Tundra, 1.99 APR with a $2,000 loyalty cash. We're going to do a free-for-all Friday. we got Brent Beard coming up here in just a couple of seconds. We've got RJ Young is going to be joining us coming up at 3 o'clock. We'll take phone calls between about 2.20 all the way until 3 o'clock and from 3.15 all the way until 6 o'clock. We're going to be hanging out with you. We're going to be getting you ready. I've heard some things that I want to share with you about Alabama. Um uh, some positives, but also one little concern because uh, it's one of those that we'll dive into. We'll talk about it coming up. We've also got some new playoff odds, not of winning the playoff, but just actually to be able to make it into the playoff. We've got some yes and no's. And then yesterday we did the kind of the half empty approach. Today we're going to do the half full approach, right? Because yesterday we did kind of worst case scenario. What is the floor? What is the floor? You know, what is the, the ceiling today when you look at this Alabama football team? Because now uh, coming into this final scrimmage, we feel like that we have uh, a pretty good understanding of this football team. And uh, we'll see, you know, until the pads uh, come on officially at this point, you know, this last dog days of summer, uh, because school starts on the campus of the University of Alabama next Wednesday, next Wednesday. So uh, not only are we closing down camp, we're closing down the final scrimmage. Let's talk about it here on a free-for-all Friday sponsored by Brian Harden Construction, ASME certification, I-beam installation, fabrication. And as Brian always loves to do this time of the year, he says, Brian, Ryan, don't talk about me. Uh, talk about our community. We do have uh, the third annual Tuscaloosa Toyota Golf Classic coming up at Oak Colony. That's coming up in September. We also have our big event uh, coming up, the Pigskin Kickoff. Last year it was Reese Davis. This year it is John Hanna. It is Nate Oates. And it's also uh, our good friend, Cedric Burns. So uh, Cedric Burns, Nate Oates, and John Hanna going to be a part of the uh, speaking engagement. 
raising money for Tuscaloosa Angels, which sponsors foster families here in our community. It's going to be happening at the University Church of Christ. Uh, talked to them a couple of minutes ago, and we're about to dip down into the single digits on the tables. I think we have 11 tables left. Uh, we're down to 11 tables. We just made this announcement last Friday on this program. It was the first time that that had been announced, and we're down, literally down to almost single-digit tables. So uh, we expect probably at the middle of next week we're going to be completely sold out. So August the 26th is that event, and uh, hey, we're excited about it. And uh, we'll be talking more about that as we move uh, onward right here on the game. Let's go to Brent Beer, Jacksonville, Florida, First Coast News, ABC, NBC News affiliate. Hey, Brent Beer, I hope you're having a great Friday afternoon. Welcome into the game in Tuscaloosa. Ooh. Well, with it being the last Friday without college football, it certainly is a good day. Number one, I wanna, I'm wondering if your car dealership could get me a 25 hybrid Camry. Um, I'm driving a 10 year old car and I need to uh, upgrade. upgrade at some, okay. Yes, I do. I need to upgrade uh, at, at some point. Those hybrids are really nice. They get about 50 miles a gallon, which is a dream. They do. They do. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I got, well, hey, hey, Ryan. hey, hey, I kid you not. <laughs> when they handed me the sheet and it said, hey, yeah. this is a this is the new 2025 Camry, I went, Yeah. Is it really 53 miles per gallon? And he said, Yes, it's the new Camry. It is getting fifty over fifty miles per gallon. And I went, Wow, maybe I'll start driving a Camry because uh, really? Yeah, yeah. You're you're a you're a truck guy, so I don't see that happening, frankly. Uh, uh, but but that's okay too. And by the way, um, I heard your sports report right before you came on. I, I won't dwell on this at all, <laughs> but you appreciate the humor here. Um, Connor Stallion, as you know, who is at Michigan, got him a a D coordinator job at a high school. <laughs> Ryan, I'm being facetious here, but I'm really not. Um, if you hired him on, could you trust him for longer than five minutes? No, no, you you would have to, you would have to keep, and and you know it's a, it's a great point because when you look at Connor Stallions, did we just give Michigan a free pass on this? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that, we, now we, the, it, it went away. It just went away. It just boom, gone. Now, now the NCAA has not ruled as far as the enforcement part of it, but you and I both know how long these things take, and if it's the usual. What, Ryan, a year and a half? Something like that? Will uh, Ryan, will anyone remember what happened in that situation a year and a half? Nobody. Nobody. I mean, because, listen, I, right. I think we're, in, we're yeah. in the world of college football now. We're winning at all costs. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you, no. if you get it with integrity. No. Not, nobody. Like, Ohio State this, this, this upcoming year. Do you think if they won the national title, they would be thinking about all the tampering they did around the world of college athletics? No, no, no. It, no it is no, winning at no. all costs. That's where we're at. Uh, nobody cares about ethics anymore. Um, you know, I don't know if it's great for the game uh, for us to be in this, you know, situation. Right. But but nobody nobody cares. I mean, Michigan fans, they got them a championship. That's all they care about. Well, and, and what Ryan and I were talking about is all. All these things that you and I used to follow these NCAA investigations about, all this stuff's illegal now, Ryan. That that that, that that's the only thing different now than what it used to be. Yeah, I mean it's it's an it's a wild wild west uh, mm -hmm. when you look at the world of college athletics. Um, from your perspective, it, it seems like this Alabama team is, is kind of trending upward. We got through the yes. first scrimmage last weekend. This is a talented football team. And I know I've been saying this for the first 15 days of camp. Well, when you go out there and you put your eyes on this team and you see it with your own eyes, it's a good-looking football team. I mean, this team's got sure. a lot of talent. Oh, yeah. Uh, it, there's some questions on this team, but there's also a lot of answers to a lot of questions that we had throughout the offseason. Does David Ballou get the credit that he deserves? No. For I, when, you, when, I, you, uh, uh, when you see the numbers – of how fast they are, how big they are, how how stronger they are. Uh, I, I uh, listen. Somebody needs to put that on a, on a humongous banner and hang it up somewhere. Yeah, I mean, I mean, when you look at the the weight that these guys have been able to add to, 
the yes. players yes. who needed to lose weight. You know, we were reading Correct. through Alex Scarborough's article uh, uh, when you look at some of the lower uh, body uh, production mm -hmm. outputs that have been right. increased, the amount of weight. I mean, this is like I said, when you go out there and you look at different players and you you go, man, wow. I mean, the eye test, uh, adding bulk, adding weight. Jaheim Otis doesn't even like the same player. We were talking about that with a guy that was a consultant back in the spring, Coach Pete Jenkins, and he doesn't even – he's wearing a different number, but, I mean, it's more than just a number. He has transformed his body. Uh, LT Overton's another young man that, that looks great. Yes. You just go through yes. and you're just going through and you're like, man, it looks like a different football team from a mental conditioning standpoint or a physical conditioning standpoint. Uh, they are stronger. Uh, and, and look, I'm not saying last year's team, either one of us are that they were weaklings, uh, but a stronger football team could do nothing but help. And look at Overton, my understanding is the A&M transfer uh, has been unblockable, uh, which is a which is a tremendous thing because they look any any really tremendous Alabama football team at least has had what Ryan one or two difference makers on the D line. It's the difference when you have to account when you have to be able to account uh, for that that dominant defensive lineman to give him uh, some extra attention whether it's double team or just you know occupying a chip or something. To be able to say, hey, we got to know where that guy is. We got to know where that guy is. And LT Overton, you know, for his stake, coming into the second scrimmage, because we know what he did last Saturday. He was dominant. Uh, I, I heard he had three sacks. Now, you, you say, <laughs> hold on a minute now. Three sacks? Three sacks. Now, that doesn't say a lot about your offensive line. Well, mm -hmm. uh, I, I think it does. And, and really, if you look back, because I know most of the time he was going up against Caden Proctor. Uh, that's yeah. going to scare some Alabama fans. But Caden Proctor, remember, if anybody needed a spring, it was Caden Proctor. He didn't get that sure. spring. Sure, he So didn't. it's taken him a little bit of time, and it also takes a little bit of time for that offensive line to gel a little bit. But see, the the other thing with Overton, uh, with some of these guys, it's not so much that the offensive line is not good. Uh, it may be the situation where – uh, I mean, would it be fair to, fair to say maybe Overton is that good? It could be. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. I want you to put a negative approach on some things, okay? Because yesterday we forced the audience to go negative and said, what is the floor for this team? What, what is the worst case scenario? I mean, wrap it around your head. What is the worst case scenario for this team. And then we're going to go the other side and we're going to talk about the best case scenario. But additionally, Brent Beard, analyze what would be a the worst case scenario in your eyes for this football team. I, I think probably 10 or uh, 10 and 2 or 9 and 3. Uh, so certainly the the um, the ceiling would be being undefeated and, and, and getting in the playoffs that way. I, I mean, look, I, I can see Maybe Georgia winning in Tuscaloosa. I, I still think Bama's better than Tennessee. They've just got a better roster, frankly. Bama's got a better roster than Oklahoma. They've got a better roster than LSU. Now, again, just because you have a better roster, as you and I know, doesn't mean that you're going to win the game, but uh, but it really does make a difference. So, I, I mean, I, I mean, you, you could see when you could see losing a. Mm, mano mano Georgia game by, by by a touchdown or field goal, and then and then possibly uh, you know somebody kicking a late field goal to win. I, I Ryan, I, I mean, I, I as talented as they are, and I don't know if people really get that yet. And the thing that the thing I don't think they get either is how much and. and I feel like I'm going to make a, a caveat every time we say this, but um, the is I, I think how much better uh, that this coaching staff is uh, than than what they've had in the past. Uh, um, and I'm not I'm not trying to be disparaging against the um, uh, Nick Saban staff, but I just believe they have made a tremendous amount of progress. It's obvious in recruiting. And I think it's going to be obvious in development with, uh, with this coaching staff. 
Yeah, when you when you think about it from from a perspective, when you look around the talent, yeah, they've got injury concerns. Uh, if you have an injury to key position, but you know what? You know who else I heard it, and we played the audio yesterday from Kirby Smart. He stood at that podium and said, mm-hmm. "We're as thin as we've ever been on many different areas." But he said, "That's yeah. the new college right. football. This, this is it the is. new college football. This, this is just yeah. something that we're all going to have to get accustomed to saying." when you look at how thin these football teams are. I mean, it, it's any team out here that has an a injury at a certain position. Uh, can oh, you yeah. navigate it? That'll be the one that'll still stand up in January and hoist up that trophy. Well, and see, Texas is a great example of that. I mean, they lost Baxter, C.J. Baxter, and now they've lost another one of their running backs. So they've only got three running backs right now. Now, that's not to say they can't make receivers and running backs, and they don't have freshmen who can help them out. But but to, to, to your point, there are just certain positions, and you know, you and I have talked about this over the years, that you, you re, and running backs is one of those, you, you really can't have enough running backs in this league, can you? No, you cannot. No, you cannot. And I mean, but you know, you speaking of running backs, uh, I think that's a strength for Alabama. I went back and listened to some of J- Justice Haynes um, yesterday. He was talking about that that running back room and how close knit they are and how much of a family yeah. that's created. He said it's not just on the football field; it's away from the football field. He was going through different things uh, that they have put a point of emphasis of bonding away from the field, and it, it's not about. I won the day. It's about we win the day. I'm telling you, they, they're they saying all the right things. We'll see if they put it all together. Uh, but psychologically, I can't remember a team uh, that, that is this mentally dialed in, uh, you know, in, in the month of August before the season started. Well, and I think Haynes and Miller could be two of the better running backs Alabama has had in a long time. Uh, I mean, to me, that, that both those guys are thousand-yard backs or fifteen hundred-yard backs, and they both can catch the ball, uh, and that that even adds more. Now, again, obviously, how much they play will depend on how well they can block and pick up the blitz, and we all understand that. But from a just a pure production standpoint, Ryan, I I, I think this could be uh, one of the more exciting all offense. All Offenses that, that Alabama has been able to have with this offensive line, it's lighter, it's quicker, uh, and then you throw in uh, these backs, and uh, it, you can't cover everything. You can't take everything away, and that's got to mean, uh, man, uh, if that don't excite your listeners, I don't know what does. Brent, let me ask you when you look at some of these other perspectives, when, when you talk about Florida because uh, we, we don't generally hear a lot about it. I, I kind of want to go through some of these teams that you yeah. know, we don't really spend enough time talking sure. about. Uh, Billy Napier, is it fair to say he's on the hot seat coming into this year? Yeah, that's a fair statement. I mean, and they've got a brutal schedule. I still think they can be uh, uh, seven and five or six and six, which I think would, would ensure him coming back. Listen, you and I have talked about this for – Dan Mullen really left the cupboard bare. That you know, a lot of people don't want to admit that, but that's a lot of what happened. I think they'll be better defensively. Ron Roberts, who I know some Auburn fans didn't like, is coming over, and I think he will help them be a veteran uh, voice. Uh, it, it, frankly, um, I think um, I, offensively, I think Florida's going to be very good. Um, I mean, they've got Montreal Johnson is. He had to have some uh, his knee scoped. Um, Graham Mertz is going to be one of the better quarterbacks in the league. Uh, the offensive line, it, it, that's going to be important for them. But but I, if you look at their schedule, I think they can be for four one and five and zero. Oh. Still think they're probably a better team than LSU is I mean, towards their roster. So yes, it, it's going to be a it's going to be a difficult um, schedule to say the least. But at the same time, um, again, if they could get they could get seven five, some people think it could be better than that. But that Miami game start of the season is just humongous for them. It will be. It will be. Uh, let me go to the Missouri Tigers because it's a game that we were talking about here 
uh, I guess earlier in the week, when you look at the Missouri Tigers coming to Tuscaloosa, uh, Eli Drinkowitz, can he get back-to-back seasons where he's exceeded the expectations? Because, you know, this time last year, we were probably talking about him on the hot seat. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I remember talking about him on the hot seat, and a few weeks later, they gave him an extension and a raise. They did. So yeah. uh, you remember that? I uh, and, uh, and they And no one expected that to be happening. Uh, but, they, but he did a really good job. I could see him. How can I phrase this? I, I, and with, without being disparaging against Missouri, I, I could see him in his next job uh, really being uh, uh, in, in with, with one of the teams in the upper echelon. Frankly, uh, I think he could do that. He is he handles, handles himself well with the media, but they've got Brady Cook coming back. They've got Luther Burton coming back. Schrader. The running back, you remember, who did everything is not coming back. The big deal with them is going to be their defense. Blake Baker, as you know, went to LSU. Uh, so they're kind of starting over defensively. Uh, uh, they've got a pretty easy schedule that's going to help them. Two of the easier schedules in the league uh, is Ole Miss and Missouri. Uh, folks look that up, and, and the, the, that will – give you an understanding of um, how, how well these teams could do. And Missouri may get a real plus out of that. I mean, my stars, Ryan, if you come out of September undefeated, uh, and, I mean, the, the, that could really propel them with something. So, I mean, again, Bama's got a better roster than Missouri, but you, you and I know what this league is. You get in a space of three or four weeks when you're in the conference, you get it. You lose a starter every week. Missouri's coming in, and you look up, and you're down three or four starters, and that's not a good thing. Brett, how about the Tennessee Volunteers? When you look at uh, Josh Heupel, uh, able to to really, you feel like Tennessee's headed in the right direction. Um, when you look at yeah. 2024 for the Volunteers, what do you see? I, I think they will be. Uh, um, I think they'll be a bit better than they were last year. Um, uh, Nico Lamaliva, and we'll learn how to pronounce it before the year's over. Uh, it took us long enough to p- pronounce. Tua, I, I, I say we mind. just call him. I say we call him just Nico. I, I think that's <laughs> that, he's going to become a Nico, in my opinion. <laughs> he is. He is. I agree with that. Yeah, yeah. That's like Snake Staver. Just, just, just calling him too. All right. So uh, the um, uh, I mean Tennessee. Uh, um, I, and Nico will be better than Joe Milton. Uh, I, Joe Milton can throw at 80 yards, uh, but I, but sometimes Joe Milton struggled uh, on uh, third and eight. And you remember the Tennessee game? I was up for that. Got a chance to to cover it last year, and that they got ahead of Bama. Bama soared back, and and frankly was one of the defining games uh, of the entire season. So. Uh, uh, but what Tennessee did last year that was really impressive um, was they were able to uh, – uh, they led the league in tackles for loss. This Pierce kid on the uh, rush end is considered one of the better draft choices, maybe in the top five draft choices. Brew McCoy comes back at wide receiver. Squirrel White comes back at wide receiver. Um, and that will help. I think their lineup will be will be better. They've got a sneaky good game with NC State uh, early on. I think that will make a difference. Tennessee beat writers have told us they think they'll challenge for the playoffs, but they may be just outside of it uh, when it's over. Hey, Brent Beard, Second Helping with you and Travis Ryer. Uh, get it where you get podcasts. You can also find him on First Coast News, uh, Jacksonville, Florida, ABC, NBC News affiliate. You can find him on Twitter uh, at straight up at Brent Beard, B-E-A-I-R-D, B-E-A-I-R-D. Find him there and also great radio stations like this one. Brent, uh, what you got planned for your final weekend before college football? You got any, anything what? to accomplish? Well, uh, I mean, there's always, I mean, for what I do, uh, I work basically seven days a week, particularly on my notebook, but uh, it will be a, a, a more of a relaxing weekend. A lot of people down here, as you can imagine, are either going or very excited 
about the uh, Florida State Georgia Tech game. By the way, Haynes King, uh, formerly of A and M, is your quarterback at Georgia Tech. So uh, that that that's a game you and I need to go over and cover. Uh, what well, one year, Ryan? Let me, when, let me uh, check the radio budget real quick. Uh, let me uh, check that real quick. Uh, let me let me let me see if I can find. Uh, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think they would approve that one. I, I think that one yeah, would, would get rejected. Yeah. I understand. Well, you know, you never know that there may be a benevolent listener or sponsor who may decide that uh, both of us need a a, uh, a little vacay go to and cover that game. But anyway. <laughs> Uh, that, that is going to be a very interesting game uh, for Florida State. They play Boston College on Labor Day night, and they've got a really, really difficult game with Memphis. Watch Memphis, uh, Ryan, just right up 78, um, and get, going through Jasper, Alabama, my hometown. Um, so that that certainly is going to be interesting. So, uh, man, it, it, it's exciting just to get it started, big scrimmages, ever where people need to be on their knees uh, praying that these scrimmages or have a lot fewer injuries than what we've seen so far. Yeah, that's that's a great goal of tomorrow afternoon's or tomorrow midday scrimmage. Hey, Brent Beard, thank you again for being a part of our show. Hope you have a great rest of your day and a great weekend, and we'll talk to you next Friday. Appreciate it as always. And the amazing thing is this time next week we'll be talking uh, game week, won't we? We will be. We will be. I mean, it has it has arrived. Finally, 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 <laughs> uh, the world of college football. Brent Beard, have a great rest of your week, man. Thank you. You too, brother. Appreciate you. Take care. Hey, hey, absolutely. Thank you. Let's continue with more. We're going to take phone calls. It's a free-for-all Friday sponsored by Brian Harden Construction. I do want to remind you about DCH. Great things are happening at DCH for over 90 years of serving our community on University Boulevard, also Northport Medical Center, Fayette Medical Center, Cancer Services, Surgical Services, Women's Services, Orthopedic Services, Trauma Services, DCH. Great things are happening at DCH, dchhealthsystem.com. We'll take your phone calls and a lot of things to talk about. we got some new odds. I think you're going to like some of them. We'll talk about it next. T-Town, Tide, 100.9-1230, WTBC, your home of Alabama Crimson Tide Sports. Hours West Alabama real time news update from the Tuscaloosa Thread Newsroom. A heat advisory is in effect for all of West Alabama through nine tonight. Heated disease could rise up to 108 degrees. There are also marginal one in five risks for strong to severe thunderstorms this afternoon and tomorrow afternoon across West Alabama. Counselors are being provided today for students at Crestmont Elementary, College, Riverside, and Eccles Middle, and Tuscaloosa County High. Many witnessed that homicide investigation on 17th Street in Northport while waiting on a school bus. Hoover resident Kerry Schrader won $400,000 on... Hey, they bundled their home and auto insurance with Progressive. Touchdown savings, Bernie Goal. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates and other insurers not available in all states or situations. Tide 100.9, Tuscaloosa weather. The sky partially sunny this afternoon. The chance of a few scattered strong storms through tonight. The high today, 95. The low tonight, 74. Tomorrow, a mix of sun and clouds with a few scattered showers and strong storms around. The high, 93. I'm James Spann on the ABC 3340 Weather Center on Tide 100.9. The Game with Ryan Fowler, powered by Tuscaloosa Toyota, on your home for Alabama sports. Tide 100.9 and streaming on the Tide 100.9 app. Scrimmage. When you talk about scrimmage number two on the campus of the University of Alabama, not just scrimmage number two, but the final scrimmage of fall camp, you know, it's all about Jayla Milrow. Uh, we heard some great things last week about Jayla Milrow taking some big steps. And, and we've heard about this. It's been a progression, right? When you look at spring football, 15 days, and then throughout camp, uh, I, I know at times uh, that people that have been allowed to go out a fan day, uh, maybe not the positive review that maybe you were expecting, but I know we had a great scrimmage last week. That's one of the things that I'm focused in on. Can he pick up where he left off last Saturday when it's all said and done? 
This was Nick Sheridan talking about that relationship with Milrow and DeBoer and how they've been able to get him to progress going in the right direction. Here is Nick Sheridan, the OC, talking about Jayla Milrow. Just having conversations on what you see and what you, you know, I think some of it kind of is, it reveals itself. You know, you, you rep the plays and, you know, we chart things and look at things and we see when he's making good, quick decisions or where maybe he needs to see that play one more time, you know, and so every quarterback's different. You know, we've had lots of different quarterbacks in our offense and they all had different things that they liked. Um, and so, yeah, just communication, you know, and open and honest conversations. I think that's really important between a quarterback and his coaches is that he's honest about what he sees, what he feels, what he likes. Um, and we're honest about the same on our end, you know, and so that's been great. Okay. And that's Nick Sheridan talking about Jay LaBillro. The right tackle spot uh, is one that I don't think, you know, probably going into this camp, uh, you've probably thought Elijah Pritchett was going to be able to win that. It, it seems like so far. Now, this is going to be another big scrimmage, uh, but Wilkin Formby is fighting for that spot. And you would almost say at this point, unless something happens and Elijah Pritchett uh, takes over, it, it seems like Wilkin Formby may get the crack, the first crack at that right tackle spot. Just just from things that I'm hearing kind of behind the scenes, anything can, can happen. And, and we'll see if this offensive line is better with Wilkin Formby, or they could be better with Elijah Pritchett at uh, to be determined. We're going to break. Stephen and Raleigh, North Carolina, get ready. We're coming to you in three minutes. T Town Tide, 100.9, 1230, WTBC, your home of Alabama Crimson Tide Sports. <laughs> Weekday mornings at 6 a.m. The Martin Houston Show. Join the Martin Houston Show for a manic Monday as we'll review the biggest takeaways, the good, the bad, and the mistakes from Alabama's second scrimmage as we move closer to the first game kickoff. We'll add Kenneth Smith uh, the third to the conversation. We'll add you to the conversation at 205-342-9904. All of those things and more on a manic Monday as we reach. Jewelers, we have exceptional pieces to mark your special occasion. Visit Hudson Pool Fine Jewelers downtown Tuscaloosa or at HudsonPool.com. Dos Amigos, Highway 69 in the New Public Shopping Center. 11 a.m. opening, 10 p.m. Friday and Saturday, closing at 9, Sunday through Thursday. Some great Mexican cuisine, the great fajitas, the great desserts, the great lunch specials. You'll find it at Dos Amigos in the Public Shopping Center on Highway 69. Takeout orders. Now through December 28th, Castrol Edge and Edge High Mileage Motor Oil are on rollback at Walmart. Claim based on sequence dine test under high-low conditions versus API SP test limits. Stay up to date with the Crimson Tide. Local high school sports and Bama in the pros right here. On Tide 100.9. So here we go. We're going best case scenario. Best case scenario. Let me take you to Circa Sports. Circa Sports has got odds around the University of Alabama. But now, if you say no, it's minus 125. If you say yes, it's minus 105. So almost, I mean, not too far away, not even money, but it, it's darn close when you look at it. How many times have you been able to bet on Alabama? In other words, you bet 10000 bucks and you bet on them to make the college football playoffs. That's a pretty positive line. LSU's a plus 120. Michigan's a plus 140. Florida State's a plus 160, plus 180 for Utah, plus 185 for Tennessee, 190 for Clemson, plus 200 for Miami, uh, plus 200 for the Missouri Tigers, Texas A&M plus plus uh, 210. And Kansas State's plus 300. Those are all teams that are behind Alabama. The teams that are ahead of Alabama, Ole Miss minus 130, Penn State minus 150, Notre Dame minus 180, Texas 235, Oregon minus 380, Georgia 575, Ohio State minus 800 if you think they are going to make the college football playoffs. We'll get into the nose a little bit later. Uh, most optimistic view. Stephen, Raleigh, North Carolina. Stephen, good afternoon. You're in the game. I hope all is well. All is well, Ryan. All is well, Ryan. How are you doing? 
Hey, I'm good. Good. Having a great day. Super day. Good. Um, you know, uh, I remember what year did uh, what year was that we opened up with uh, with Virginia Tech? Beat them like thirty four to twenty four. Do you remember that year? I do. Um, have we not opened up with Virginia Tech twice? Oh, maybe so. We won the national championship the year that we won. We were plus thirty two hundred or something like that to win it all. Oh, that year. Okay. That was the highest I remember. And don't get me wrong, Ryan. I'm getting old, so I could be misremembering the Clint, the year. Did we not open up with them in 09? Yeah, we did. No, we did. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. That's yeah, the we, year I'm thinking yeah, about. Yeah, 3424, uh, coming off the undefeated regular season in 2008. The plus 3200 is what I remember before we opened up with Virginia Tech. Is the but best ha- odds it, I've seen. Is time just flying, but have we not played them? before i mean we've played them since then yes we have have. okay for some reason in in my head we i feel like we have but uh anyway i don't know i don't know i remember playing them in the 97 music city bowl yeah lord have mercy what was that i was at that game were you at that game cowboys and uh that had a uh pretty no i was not at that game but i mean the, the guy that was a running back um yeah, I don't remember. That's been almost anyway, 20 years anyway, ago, it's, Ryan. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been more than 20 years ago for that game, but not 2009. But continue. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Um, yeah, it was lightning and snowing in that game all at the same time. I remember that. But, um, you know, these odds, uh, what, what did you say we were, plus 140 to, to even make the playoffs? Yeah, so if you look at Circa, by the way, we played them in 2013. We beat them 35 to 10. Uh, Alabama's a minus 105 to make the playoffs. Oh, okay. If you say no, uh, then it's a minus 125. So the no is less odds than the yes. If you look at just making the college football playoffs, not not winning it, not to finish right. the first round, just to be there. Ryan, I looked at FanDuel yesterday here in North Carolina because uh, Mark, back in March it became legal to do the online betting in North Carolina, and it was even. It was 100 to make the playoffs for Alabama with FanDuel right now. Well, and I'm looking at ESPN bets, the same thing. It's identical. Even money? Yeah, even money. Yeah, but that's what it is on FanDuel, too. It's been a long time. I think we were plus 1,400 to win it all, which has been a while since we've been that high, too, if you think about it. So, you know, I was listening to your show uh, yesterday, Ryan. I I didn't get a chance to call in. You were talking about, you know, the bottom. What's our bottom? And I I don't mean to repeat, but you talked about you thought nine and three would make the playoffs. But is nine and three with Alabama the same as nine and three with Penn State or nine and three with Missouri? Is every nine and three the equal? Well, nine and and three. It, it, from an Alabama standard, would be a little bit down, right? I mean, you would. It would be. It would be. Just, I'm a little more. I'm a little higher on our bottom. That's. I. I think the absolute bottom is ten and two. That's me. But you know me. I'm. I'm Mr. Positive. So. Um, but you know, nine and three for some other teams in the SEC, I don't think gets them in the playoffs. But nine and three, I think it depends on who you lose to, and how other teams play out. How it plays out with other teams. Power, uh, what's that pro football focus put out their top 25 today? Did you see that? I did not. Uh, I, and I'm a huge fan of profootballfocus.com. Who do they have up there at the top? Well, they had Georgia, of course, but they had Ole Miss ahead of us. Uh, we were seven or eight, not five. Okay. I'm, when I'm going RJ off the memory. Young- R.J. Young is going to be joining us coming up uh, in just a couple of minutes. I'm a big fan of R.J.'s work. Uh, he's got Alabama in his poll at number nine, too. Yeah, I wasn't a fan of his video the other day on Twitter, that's for sure, of how down well, he was and, on and Alabama. I wanna, like I said, I'm always looking for people to you know to explore their opinion, to, to hear their analysis, and uh, you know, I, I can't wait to, to kind of dive into this a little bit with him and uh, we, we've looked at some of his numbers yeah. on Fox Sports, and, and we'll we'll talk about it coming up as his R.J. Young's ultimate 134. 
you know, I think some of that, Ryan, is what, what is he seeing that I'm not seeing? Yeah, that's, you have that that's, aspect of that's, it. That's, that's why I want to get him on because uh, it's not that I disagree with him. I just want to hear him explain it uh, from his perspective. Because the, the uh, one thing, but, and I think there's some things that we probably see that maybe he doesn't see. And Brent Beard referenced well, it earlier. This coaching staff, I would, I don't think, you know, when, when Will Anderson said what he did earlier this week about Coleman Hutzler and talking about, hey, I didn't see eye to eye with my position coach at Alabama, his production was cut in half. His production from year that uh, Sal Sansuri coached him to Coleman Hutzler was literally cut in half. We, he went from 101 tackles or 102 down in the 50s. His sack production, almost, almost half as well. Tackles for a loss, over half. The coaches were right. weak here when you look at the assistant coaches in Tuscaloosa. Ryan, you've been talking about, about on your show here this week about uh, depth and every team, even the highest teams, the best teams are, are having depth problems because their depth is transferring away. You know, every team's going through that. And we're going to see freshmen, like you said on your show, we're going to see younger and younger people getting reps because you have to, you have to, innate, you have to get them involved in order to just to keep them. Because if you're not getting them involved, they're going to go somewhere where they can get involved. So your depth is going away. Ryan, when you look at our coaching staff now, and how much better I believe from top to bottom they are when you've got equal teams at the top of college football because of parity, what they're calling parity, what do you think is going to make the difference in who wins it all and who doesn't? Is how you can get, yes. It's coaching and how you involve and manage that roster. That's the teams that are going to win it all. And I just I, I don't mean to disparage anything that Nick the coach Saban did, but I think from that aspect, from X's and O's, and the system that Kalen DeBoer has in, went, that puts in place, and the relationship that he talks about, his number one thing is relationship with his players and with the players with each other. I think we're in a much better place to handle that situation. Well, and I think when you look at this bond that they've been able to create with players, with coaches, it tells me uh, that's how you are able to navigate this portal. Because go back to the spring portal period where we thought, okay, here we go. We're going to have more players enter into the portal period. What happened? Very few, very few. Uh, and even at the position that we thought we were going to see a lot of, the quarterback, zero, zero. All of these guys said, you know what, I'm better as a backup under K1 Boer and Nick Sheridan than I would be if I transferred somewhere else. Ryan, when I, I look at, like, uh, Keon Saab and I look at Caleb Downs, what's going to be interesting because of how uh, friendly this system is for the safety, it's going to be interesting to see where Saab gets drafted versus where Downs gets drafted in a different system when it comes to the NFL draft. I'm going to be watching for that. Yep, me too, me too. So best case scenario, you saying what? Best case scenario? Yeah, that's what we're, yeah, that's what we're going to throw out there today. Ryan, I'm, I'm going undefeated. Drink that Kool-Aid. Here we go. Get you a glass. <laughs> there we go. I mean, get you a, is there any, get you a glass. Is there any? For me to not stay undefeated, is there anybody on our team, on our schedule, that we can't beat? Do you think there's anybody on our schedule we can't beat? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So I have to go undefeated. Because if we, if the injury bug is well for us, I just don't see anybody that we cannot beat. Anyhow. I'm with you. Well, Thank you, man. Ryan. Appreciate yes, sir. you. Absolutely. Uh -huh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's continue. We'll break here. We'll come back. We're going to squeeze in a couple of more calls. R&R and &R Cigars. R&R and &R Cigars. 2703 6th Street. 2703 6th Street. It's R&R &R Cigars. When you look at relaxing, recharge, HDTVs, home theater systems. When you look at our good friends right there, relax and recharge. 
Uh, be a great place to enjoy the Cigar Mansion, 2703 6th Street, R&R Cigars. We'll continue with more of the game. Tide 100.9-1230 WTBC, your home of Alabama Crimson Tide Sports. Best quality to our customers. So we just look at it as, hey, basically, we're your kitchen. Uh, you're just coming to eat in your kitchen. Taco Casa, one of the biggest cactus in town. Alabama Credit Union with the official countdown to Alabama Crimson Tide football right here on the game. AlabamaCU.com. The mobile app saves a lot of time. The mobile deposits, checking, savings, mortgage, home equity loan, financing a vehicle, the great competitive rates. Alabama Credit Union. Or return it for free with Lumi's 60-day money-back guarantee. That's L-U-M-E deodorant.com. Code SHOWER to save 15% today. You're inside the game on your home for Alabama sports. Tide 100.9 and streaming on the Tide 100.9 app. Do remind you about the work in Western wear for the entire family. The work in Western wear can be found at 1976, since 1976 at the wharf. All the people that work extremely hard in West Alabama, you can find that hard, uh, the apparel that matches that hard work, whether it's the Carhartt clothing, the Rocky clothing, the Under Armour clothing, uh, Wrangler, Levi Lee, and all the steel toed boots, casual boot, Western wear for the entire family. Uh, you will find it right there at the wharf since 1976. The Work in Western headquarters for the entire family. You'll find it on McFarland Boulevard. You will find it between uh, the old Winn-Dixie Shopping Center. El Grand is right there. And then also the Blue Plates. You'll find it right on the right-hand side of the road as you travel westbound. Go see the wharf. R.J. Young, He's he's got a little questions about Alabama. His 134 starts out. Alabama at the number nine spot. Ohio State, number one. He's got the Georgia Bulldogs, number two. We're going to talk about it. Number three, uh, we'll dive into it. He's got uh, the Texas Longhorns. A lot of hype around Texas. R.J. Young, Fox Sports, National Analyst, next. T-Town, Tide, 100.9, 1230, WTBC. Your home of Alabama Crimson Tide. Blue Spring Living Water is located in Bluntsville, Alabama, Blunt County, about an hour north of Birmingham. Blue Spring Living Water is harvested and bottled from a centuries-old natural spring on a private family farm. Blue Spring is an all-natural water source that flows just under a million gallons a day. They have partnered with Waterway of Alabama and they've been in the water delivery business for over 30 years to have Blue Spring Living Water delivered right to your home, right to your front door every month. New customers get their five jugs for $50, and the empties are exchanged every month for new ones. I know we have it at the Fowler household. We drink more water because of bluespringlivingwater.com. You can sign up at 205-602-3426. Talk to someone directly. Blue Spring Living Water can also be found. Mark Smart downtown. The stores and protects. Now you can get five quarts with an STP Extended Life oil filter for $37.99. Get in the zone, auto zone. Restrictions apply. El Grant is the great Mexican place in Winn-Dixie Shopping Center. Go over and see my friends, Carlos, 205-391-4555, 62 McFarland Boulevard, Monday through Thursday, 11 until 930, Friday and Saturday, 11 until 1030, Sunday also open, 11 until 9. You'll find the great daily lunch specials. You'll find great entrees, including the great fajitas, great desserts, the kids' menu, always welcome, the call-ahead orders as well. El Grand on McFarland Boulevard. You'll find it at the Winn-Dixie Shopping Center. Tide 100.9, Tuscaloosa weather. The sky partially sunny this afternoon. The chance of a few scattered strong storms through tonight. The high today, 95. The low tonight, 74. Tomorrow, a mix of sun and clouds with a few scattered showers and strong storms around. The high, 93. I'm James Spann on the ABC 3340 Weather Center on Tide 100.9. 
WTBC Tuscaloosa and W265CG Tuscaloosa, a Town Square media station. Tide 100.9 and streaming on the Tide 100.9 app. From the Fox Sports Studios in Los Angeles. Here's Isaac Lowenkron. NFL media reports that Cincinnati Bengals place kicker Evan McPherson has agreed to a three-year, $16.5 million contract extension. Los Angeles Chargers quarterback Justin Herbert is out of his walking boot. Herbert had been in the boot the past two weeks because of a right foot plantar fascia injury. He hasn't returned to practice yet, but is expected to be ready for the start of the regular season. The Detroit News reports that infamous former Michigan football staffer Connor Stallions has a new job. He's the new defensive coordinator at Detroit's Mumford High School. Mumford head coach William McMichael telling the paper, quote, I got the most hated man in college football right now. He's my new defensive coordinator, unquote. And in Major League Baseball, the Cubs had a 2-0 fourth inning lead over the Toronto Blue Jays at Wrigley Field. Any way you want. Football. We are always powered by Tuscaloosa Toyota. We're doing a free-for-all Friday. We want you to travel through the weekend stress-free, and we're going to do that by taking your phone calls in about 15 minutes right now. But right now, we're going to Fox Sports National Analyst. He's on the national side of things. College football on Fox. We're certainly proud to have an affiliation with Fox Sports Radio. Uh, he does FoxSports.com, the number one show on Fox Sports. R.J. Young, it is good to be able to catch up with you. It's been too long, my friend. Welcome back to T-Town. I appreciate you having me, Ryan. What's going on? Hey, I'm good. I'm good, man. I can't wait to kind of pick your brain about a lot of different things. But, uh, you know, th this is one of the questions that we're asking the audience. How are you spe spending this final weekend before college football gets here? You, you catch up on the honeydew list. You're knocking out some projects. What's on the agenda well, for this weekend? Well, I'm probably going to get on the bike. And go around town a little bit. Uh, I got a Continental GT 650 Royal Enfield. Really love that thing. Probably get into my <laughs> MR2 Spider, take it around town, and probably end up at Speedway. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah. That that's that's not a bad way to uh, spend the final weekend before college football. But uh, hey, we want to we want to pick your brain about a lot of different things. We want to talk about your uh, ultimate. 134, R.J. Young's Ultimate 134. We want to kind of focus it on Alabama. Let me just pick up uh, just kind of when you, when you look at Alabama. Get, give me your thoughts on this Crimson Tide football team for 2024. I mean, it's the ninth best team in the country and the fifth best team in the SEC. And I realize that I disagree with the AP by a whole four spots, but I would tell most Alabama fans to calm down if you're not happy about this because there's room for growth here. Number one, we are, we're not going, I'm not going to treat that team like it's coached by Nick Saban. I'm just not going to do that. Like, if you saw number five this year from me, it would have been because Nick Saban was head coach. Kalen DeBoer is a great coach. He ain't won a game in the SEC. Okay? He's got a roster that is about as talented as the one that Coach Saban had. Coach Saban is the greatest college football coach of all time. It was a big shoes to fill. And then I got to take a look at it and go, all right, you got Wisconsin, which you got to win on the road. You got that by. Then you got Georgia. Alongside at Tennessee, at LSU, at Oklahoma, against Missouri, and against Georgia. And by the way, South Florida and Auburn gave you the what for and the how now. So they ain't gimme. I think nine is a great spot for Alabama to start with. And you get some wins here. You go back-to-back -back, against Wisconsin and Georgia. We're going to start talking well about you all over the country. So I think they're in a good spot. They're a top-10 team. If you want to be a top-14, go get me some wins. Let me ask you, when you look at the, the rebuttal, and, and this is what we're trying to counter here. Yeah, Nick Saban was top-heavy when you look at the greatest to ever walk the sidelines. But his assistant coaches had begun to, with a downward trend. His quality assistant coaches were just not there. He saw guys with baggage. He had to get guys uh, who were kind of been fired at other spots. But we think Kalen DeBoer's coaching staff, top to bottom, is better than Coach Saban's assistant coach side of things. Would you buy that argument? No. No, not one bit. Nick Sheridan lost his job as an OC and got a new one only because Kalen DeBoer said so and couldn't get Ryan Grubb to come down. Okay? That's number one. Number two, Kane Womack got to show me something. 
right? A linguist came down from Buffalo after coaching in Michigan. Okay, fine. I'll let you add that. You got some players over there. I'm also going to add in here, y'all been spoiled with assistant coaches. Like, yeah, they, they come in there, but he turns them into winners. Lane Kiffin was damaged good. Now Lane Kiffin is one of the better coaches in all of football. Stephen Arkeesian was damaged good. He's one of the best coaches in football. Mario pushed the ball at, my goodness, Miami. We could talk about Dan Lanning being a GA on that staff, and do I need to remind people that the reigning king of college football, Kirby Smart, was his longest serving defense coordinator. I just don't buy it, guys. I, I don't buy it. I think that Coach Saban has done such a job to continue to put that place in a position to succeed, so much so that they're going to name the damn field after him. So, no, I, I'm going to disagree with that. I'm going to disagree with the, the, process, the, the thought that you don't have a great coaching staff with Nick Saban in the last four or five years. And, by the way, while we're here, that 2020 national championship team, on the short list of one of the greatest college football teams of all time, Given what they had to play through and given what they had going on, all of us had going on, I just got a hard time thinking about anybody that was on that staff that wasn't any good. All right. Beyond this year, do you believe in Kayla DeBoer long-term in Tuscaloosa? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. man is a proven winner. He's 104-12. <laughs> the, man, the man has lost an entire season of football games in 20 years. You know, now this going up, right, we're going from the NAIA, all the way up to big-time college football and having competed in the national championship just last year, he's doing all the right things, too. Like, I, I got to tell you, for a guy that ain't from the South and a guy that hasn't coached in the SEC before, he's doing everything he can to ingratiate himself with almost everybody. And, oh, by the way, Coach Saban thinks he's a hell of a good football coach. And any man that Coach Saban thinks is a hell of a good football coach, is, I think it's going to work out long term. What do you think about Jalen Milrow in this system? Hell, uh, if he can turn into Michael Penix Jr., everybody's going to be real happy about that. I mean, Michael Penix Jr. was a great passer who had knee injuries, right, shoulder injuries, comes back from rehab, and he's a player. I think if there's something to change about Jalen, I think it's simply can you complete a pass over the middle that we feel good about. That's it. We know about his deep ball accuracy, and we know about his ability to play make. Matter of fact, I remember going down to Katie Texas and watching him play at Katie Tompkins. And the thing was, is that dude ever going to throw the ball? Because he didn't have to. It was one read, and he was gone. I also think he's chippy. And I love a chippy quarterback. I love a chippy quarterback because those guys are always going to struggle to get the recognition that they deserve. I think that that dude has everything that you need to win a national championship, and I think he's got the highest ceiling of any starting quarterback in college football. What's the ceiling for this Alabama team? In your opinion, RJ, uh, we're talking to RJ Young, Fox Sports National Analyst. What's the ceiling for this team? Ceiling is a national championship, like it is every year. Like I, 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 I say every year. I'm but do you think they can get it, there? Well, hell yeah, they can get there. But I'm just not going to put them in there right now. I mean, it'd be asinine to say that Alabama can't get there. Now, number one, you're playing in the toughest league in America. You run through that league. You win the SEC championship, we're probably going to pick you to get to the national championship. I, I don't think that this – I don't understand, right? There, there's, there's room here. Is there, not, is there not room here to grow? Because if you start them out as a national champion, nobody's going to believe that. Nobody. But if they go win some games, it's going to be like old times. Hell, did you think that Alabama was going to make the college football playoff after losing to Texas? I would, I would, no. I would venture to say no. no. Yeah. What, do you think they would have beat Georgia last year before the game? That would have been a no, too. Okay. All right. That's all I'm saying. Let, we can be reasonable about it. That's all. But, but RJ, is it – when I look back at last year, okay, and I, I this is going to sound crazy. It Maybe it's just the new college football, but to me that team had no business being in the college football playoffs, right? I mean, it, it's not a – it was not a quality team. If you're ranking – you know, 10 Nick Saban teams, that would be 10 out of 10. That team was able to navigate it. That may tell us a lot about college football and what it takes to win now compared to what it did five, six, seven, eight years ago. I don't know about that. I don't know about that because 2019 Alabama is right there, and all they did was make the Citrus Bowl, right? Like that, that they were right there. When we're talking about the difference between beating Auburn and not is what we're really talking about. Did you beat them or not? And that team beat them, okay? That, that team beat them with the damn Grave Digger play. Fourth and 31, <laughs> Jalen Milrow finds <laughs> Isaiah Bond standing in the back of the end zone. I'm just going to say when it came time to make a play, those kids made a play. And by the way, they had Michigan right where they wanted them until they did. Like you, two yards, and we're playing another overtime, 
And then what? Right? We could see talking about Alabama being in that national championship game. I also think that it shouldn't have been up to them because I think Florida State fans are right to be aggrieved. I mean, I've been standing on the table all last year going, they ain't played nobody. And then I'm also saying if they were on the table, they need to be in. And they ran the table. And you told me that their quarterback was not good enough for them to make the college football playoff when all we do is tell the kids that it's team sport. That's all we do. That's all we do. We yell and scream. It's team sport. It takes more than just one. They made it about one damn player, and they put Alabama in there. I don't think Alabama's going to turn anything down by the, but their college. But I am going to say that team has showed me enough to make the college football playoff just not over an undefeated Florida State team, and I think that's true in every year. When you look at your 134, you've got Ohio State at one, Georgia two, Texas at three. How big is the gap between those three teams? Uh, three spots. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, yeah, sure. That's how big sure. the gap is. You know, okay. uh, like I don't, I don't do in between the lines. It's it's one to three, and it's one to three for a reason. You know, uh, it's also what are we really discussing here? And the way I put together the one thirty four is I start with who I think has the best chance to win the national championship when we start playing football games, and then go from there. Right? That's going to change. I don't believe in putting out a list or a ranking that is supposed to hold up through the entire season. That's why we play ball games. Right. This is a primer. This is where we're starting. And I tell you what, the reason these things are important is because somebody out there is going to vote for Vanderbilt to win the damn SEC title. And ain't nobody going to get on with that. But if you have Vanderbilt starting out as the top 25 team, and then you got to think about all the work we got to do to get somebody else in the top 25 because somebody was stupid enough to put the Commodores there, we got a problem. And that's the reason why I take these things so seriously. Right. The rankings matter. Preseason, postseason, they matter. Because we got people that do not take this sport as seriously as some of us. And we already get maligned for this stuff. So the least we can do is try to do the best we can with what we got. We start playing football games, then we're going to figure some things out. Hell, it, it might be as quickly as week two, we might have a new number one. I mean, not for nothing, Clemson would love to give Georgia a, a loss here. And maybe they can do it, given what we know about what Georgia's done off the field. I'm really curious. I'm really curious. But that's why I start these things. I start them with who can win the national championship and go down. Are you believing in Oregon to compete, not just for a playoff spot, but a national title? Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, why, why wouldn't I? Like, I don't – the reason I got to – I think I think when I talk about these things across the country, there, there, are, there are parts of the audience that just doesn't watch the other part of the football. And by that, I mean the other part of the football would be Big Ten, right? The other part of the football would be the SEC. I got folks in Oregon who don't think that Alabama's worth a damn, and I'm going, y'all are in for a rude awakening. And I got folks in Florida who are like, I don't know about Oregon. Dylan Gabriel is a player, right? Put it, up, put it this way. Dylan Gabriel needs to pass for 4,353 yards to become the all-time leading passer in the sport over 155 years, okay? With Will Simon, the coordinator, probably going to get that. He's got Evan Stewart at wide out, which y'all know about because he was over at A&M making it happen. He's got Tez Johnson returning. They got a defense that can get after folks. And remember, this is an Oregon team that when Mario Cristobal went into Columbus, Ohio, and handed them an L without Kayvon Thibodeau. And I think Dan Lanning is a better football coach than Mario Cristobal. And oh, by the way, another Nick Saban, Kirby Smart disciple up there in the Big Ten. Yeah, I believe they can win a national championship. Let's go to Ole Miss. The pressure uh, and the attention has never been uh, more than it is right now. I mean, Ole Miss has been a team that's been blocked uh, by Alabama and LSU and other teams in the SEC West. Uh, can Ole Miss really make a run at this in 2024? Well, I think they're throwing it all in on this one, man. Uh, you look at what sure. they did in the transfer portal, and all I asked Lane to do was uh, tell Pete to put a damn lid on the defense, and then we could start talking about playing ball. Because they got all the skill players they're ever going to need. You know, that, that part. Walter Nolan is a big one for them. Ivy is a big one for them. But I'm also looking around and I'm going, look here. Uh, I grew up as a child in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Okay, um, My mama had me worship at the altar of Patrick Chetan, right? I, I Brett Favre was down the road. Southern Miss is the squad. You didn't get caught dead rooting for old men. Okay? There's reasons for that. But one of the reasons was they ain't doing nothing. And they ain't, they ain't done nothing to nobody. Now, we got to take it back to, what is it, Johnny Vault, the last time that they had as many wins 
as they did last year because the school record for 11 wins, right? But both of those losses, as you pointed out, were to Georgia and Alabama. Well, hell, they ain't got them both on the schedule this year. They ain't got, they ain't got Alabama. So you gear up, you go beat who you got to beat, and then we'll see where it lies. I think the other thing that's going to happen here is we're going to find out how deep they are because this 17-game schedule is it's going to show itself. You're too deep. is going to get some work. I know they got talent. I know that they're scary fast on offense. I just don't know if they're going to be able to hold up for an entire year. Yeah, and you brought up depth. Uh, we played the audio, I think it was yesterday and Wednesday, from Kirby Smart talking about depth. And, uh, you know, we kind of put these Bama blinders on in camp. And, and, yeah, it's a big problem here in Tuscaloosa at certain positions. Certain positions they would be able to navigate it. But when I heard Kirby Smart kind of address it earlier this week. I mean, that's one of the top teams in college football, and he's going – uh, depth is a problem. I mean, it's going to be a survival contest in 2024 of the world of college football. Good. You know, like, I like it that way. I really want to see who can bring out a Chris Comer, if you will. And by the way, since, uh, since we're here, Ryan, y'all got one of mine, okay? Uh, number one, Josh Jacobs jersey's over here in the house. We hold it up, <laughs> right? Big deal out here. But the sure. other one you got is my high school football coach's son, okay? Mike Adams coached me football here in Memorial and Tulsa. His boy Cole is a player, and I was mad as hell to find out he got out of the state. And then I found out where his boy was. Well, Nick Saban recruits you. And you're going to go co- play for Coach Saban. I think Cole is a great example of the depth that you have offensively, right? I, you got to see a little bit of it, but I got to tell you that was a dude that was projecting his safety like his daddy in high school up here at Owasso, and all y'all got to, uh, got him out there doing catching everything that gets thrown in his direction. I think if you got a bunch of Cole Adams on your squad you got enough depth to get by. It, it is a dude that doesn't also get injured. It's a guy that takes care of his body, takes care of his, uh, his classwork, and is credible over the middle. That's what I want to wide out. If you got a bunch of those, you're in a good spot. Well, you you mentioned Cole Adams. We uh, Jamarcus Shepard was on our station on another show, uh, and somehow Cole Adams just got brought up. I mean, listen, he's in that rotation as a wide receiver, and the speed is dangerous. We love Jamarcus Shep. I mean, man, he is fun to be able to listen to. Uh, but he brought up Cole Adams as a name that uh, kind of keep an eye on, maybe the under-radar kind of pick in that wide receiver room. What told me that he was a player for them is that he's rotating in with Ryan Williams. That, that's the squad that he's rotating in with. You got, you got one, I believe, on the outside, one on the inside. I don't know if y'all use X or Ys down there. I'm not really that into the Sheridan's offense. Okay, thank you. It's that. If you're rotating in, rotating in with the only two-time Mr. Alabama football, you must have a little bit of speed, right? Now, again, I'm just mad as hell because we saw it here for four years, and the boy got out of state, you know? It's one of those things. But I, I think that Cole also is going to give everybody Lad McConkie vibes from Georgia. They're going to give Slade Bolden vibes. Insert, right, fast white dude in the middle, Hunter Renfro. That's who that dude is going to be for you, and I think he's going to be one of your favorite players. I think he's going to be one of those guys that people that love Alabama football and know the program wrap their arms around because he's everything you want in a tied player. Give me a sleeper team in the SEC. Oklahoma. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Oklahoma. Look here. I didn't said this before, and I'm probably going to keep saying it. Uh, one of the things that makes me who I am is I embrace where I'm from. And sure. I'm blessed to cover the sport nationally. But in the state of Oklahoma, that's the protein. That, 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 that's the protein. And we wanted to join the SEC because we wanted to play the best and we wanted to know that if we beat the best, we're going to get an opportunity to play for a national championship. The thing that I've been telling folks is it ain't that Oklahoma got to play the SEC. It's that the SEC got to play Oklahoma. I need you to understand me now, all right? It ain't, ain't nobody saying it ain't tough over there. But if you're talking about some stuff in our neck, we got some things to show. And I just don't like the way that folks are talking about Oklahoma as if we're some sort of Central Florida. You know, if, if some, as if we're some sort of UTSA born yesterday. Last time I checked, Heisman Trophy winners and national champions came out of here. You know, first round overall picks came out of here. So why are we thinking about Oklahoma as a favorite? Now I got to pick them as a sleeper. That's where we're at, Ryan. I got to pick Oklahoma as a sleeper. Well, now listen, listen, we're, we're going to embrace Oklahoma, but I, I want you to take the national hat off for just a minute, okay? Because we have Texas people who call local sports talk radio in Tuscaloosa just to talk smack, okay? I mean, these Texas people, we welcome Oklahoma, but this Texas ego, can you give us some advice on how to deal 
uh, with these Longhorn fans? Well, they shut up with a win for the most part. The other parties, they'll like to tell you that, you know, Texas was, was a nation or it was a state. I'm like, yeah, you got in it. That's how that happened. We put you back in your place. That's, that's, what, that's what happened. And that's all you got to do with them. Remind them that the first Big 12 championship they won since 2009 came from a player that saw Colt McCoy play as a four-year-old. All right? Remind them that their first entry to the college football playoff was last year and that y'all were in a room there. Remind them that Auburn has won a national championship since they last won a national championship. Remind them that Auburn goes, I believe, 6-7 and seven last year and damn near had Georgia and Alabama dead to right. And all you got to do is tell them, hey, look here, uh, y'all got lucky last year, but now you got to play Alabama and then some this year. I, look, I can keep going on about Texas uh, because, well, I'm an Oklahoma fan, and we got to play in the Cotton Bowl every single year. But the thing that I always point to them is if you talk about wins and losses and championships, you're not, you're not in the conversation. That's, that's just true. You're just not in the conversation. If you want to talk about NFL draft picks, you're not in the conversation. Not real. You got one dude in B. John Robinson the last five years, and then we've got to talk about Xavier Worthy. That's it. I think you need to remind them that they are never living up to their potential. And that, I think, is a travesty because Texas has enough money, enough pride, enough alumni, and damn sure enough talent that they should not lose a national championship. They should win every single one. So they always doing the least with the most. If that's what they're bringing to the SEC, well, that that number three ranking I got them at, that's gonna fall. And, and you know they're they're gonna be quiet now anyway because they're down two scholarship running backs. They're number one and they're number three, and they're gonna have to start moving dudes over from linebacker to fill out the depth. I don't know that you're gonna hear a whole bunch from them here in the next few weeks, but I tell you what, they better beat Michigan. They don't beat Michigan. You might not hear from them for the rest of the year. They do beat Michigan. Yeah, they're going to blow the phone line. That's just what they're going to do. RJ, give me a mid-major that you're keeping an eye on in 2024. Somebody that could kind of be a, be a part of this 12-team playoff. Memphis. University of Memphis. Uh, Ryan Silverfield and them boys, they, they're hunting. Now, two things on that. One, they got Florida State on the menu, which means that they go get that W. Yeah, okay, there's your quality win let alone if they're the, the automatic qualifier coming out of the American. They should probably be a Big 12 team, if we're being honest about this, because that's how they've been operating. And you know what? They want it. Like, the, the thing I always tell people about the group of five programs is you can always tell which one of these programs wants it by what their name, image, and likeness collectives are doing. If it feels like they're in disarray, they don't want it. If it feels like they're all pulling in the same direction, oh, yeah, they're going to be on the head. Like, we're talking about Missouri being a top-10 team because they were way out in front on name, image, and likeness. They were streamlining it, and it showed up last year. It's going to show up this year. Memphis got $25 million from Fred Smith and FedEx because they want to win. I'm telling you, man, you ought to be terrified of these G5 programs that want to win because they ain't got nothing else to lose. They know what you think about them, and they're using every advantage they can to get into your face because all they're going to say is all we, all we want is for you to put us on the same field with them. You do that, you got a shot, and that's the thing. I'm terrified of Memphis if I'm playing them this year. RJ Young, check him out, foxsports.com, uh, foxsports.com. You can also connect with him on the YouTube side of things. You can connect with him on the number one show. All of that and above is at RJ underscore Young, at RJ underscore Young. Uh, RJ, we love the passion, man. We love people that love college football the way that we do, and we always enjoy the chats, man. It's been too long. I hope you'll come on again in the future. Thank you. Heck, yeah. Thanks for having me. Thank you, R.J. Young. A lot of fun uh, talking about some college football with him. He's got Alabama at that number nine spot. We'll talk about it. We'll take your phone calls. Robert and Mobile, get ready. We're coming to you next. T-Town, Tide, 100.9, 1230, WTBC. Your home of Alabama Crimson Tide Sports. West Alabama real-time news update from the Tuscaloosa Thread Newsroom. 
Concerns about the intense heat levels have prompted the extension of the heat advisory for Alabamians. Plus, you can factor in the potential for damaging winds this weekend as well. For the full details on the weather outlook for West Alabama, be sure to tap the free Tuscaloosa Thread app. And exciting news for the Alabama Crimson Tide football program. Three offensive linemen and a surprise defender were named to the Lombardi Award presented to the top line. Or find us on Facebook, Andrew Conifer Agency. Once again, you can reach us at 205-722-9201. Allstate, are you in good hands? Northport Power Equipment, largest inventory Husqvarna dealer in the southeast. You'll find the Husqvarna models for residential and the professional landscapers, SCAG commercial mowers, residential mowers, backpack blowers, handheld blowers, battery-operated tools, the service department at Northport Power Equipment. You think it'll never happen to you, but it can. So, if you hit the bottle, don't roll the throttle. Brought to you by NHTSA. Tide 100.9, Tuscaloosa weather. The sky partially sunny this afternoon. The chance of a few scattered strong storms through tonight. The high today, 95. The low tonight, 74. Tomorrow, a mix of sun and clouds with a few scattered showers and strong storms around. The high, 93. I'm James Spann on the ABC 3340 Weather Center on Tide 100.9. Did you miss any episode on Tide 100.9? Don't worry. All of our shows can be found on Spotify and Apple Music and on demand on the Tide 100.9 app. Yes, we are. We're literally finished right now. So we're at three thirty. We're all the way wide open. Robert and Mobile is going to be our first caller. I got a little bit late there with RJ, and then we're going to go right back to phone calls at two zero five three four two nine nine zero four. We're we're talking about the the ceiling when you look at this Alabama football team. When you think about what they could be able to accomplish, even RJ said, "Hey, a national title. That, that's what the expectation is." RJ had Alabama number nine. Uh, that's part of the motivation. It's part of the motivation when you look at this Alabama team. We know that the length mentality is there, but it may not be there forever. We'll talk about why coming up in just a couple of minutes. Robert and Mobile, first caller out of the gate. Coming up next, T-Town Tide 100.9-1230 WTBC, your home of Alabama Crimson Tide Sports. Walking around the street or your living room, wherever. Grab some cheesy street chalupas at a participating Taco Bell today. For a limited time only, while supplies last. MedCenterUrgentCare.com. We expect the unexpected. Locations in Tuscaloosa, Northport, North River, right there off Rice Mine Road, Fayette, Demopolis, Hoover, the great doctors, urgent care, family medicine, injuries, occupational health, sports physicals. We do expect the unexpected. Med way. Whatever you do, do it for less at Harbor Freight. Valid until August 18th, 2024. While supplies last, limitations apply. Light up those phone lines on the game with Ryan Fowler. 205-342-9904. You're inside the game on your home for Alabama sports. Tide 100.9 and streaming on the Tide 100.9 app. It's a free-for-all Friday sponsored by Brian Harden Construction. Brian Harden Construction, ASME certification, I-beam installation, fabrication. Let's go to Robert in Mobile. Robert, good afternoon. You're in the game. I hope all is well. Oh, hey, man. How are you, Robert? <laughs> hey, man. I, know I, didn't. I thought I didn't hear the beep. <laughs> My apologies. Hey, My uh, apologies. <laughs> hey, I kind of disagree with your last guest, though, about uh, Texas. Um. Uh, but Sarkeesian, I think, is, is going to be a solid coach. And uh, with their ability to purchase players or rent players, I guess we're renting or whatever we're doing with players these days, um, man, they're going, to be a, they're going to be a force to reckon with. Well, you know, their abilities and Sark's uh, game plan and abilities and 
uh, you know, offensive coordinating abilities, play calling abilities. It's going to be they're going to be one of the top teams in the SEC. I I think pretty soon, probably I think this year they won a top team in college football last year. And what have they done to get worse than they were last year? I don't see anything. So yeah, they're going to be a force to reckon with. Uh, be, I think they'll be a playoff team and be one of the te- one of the teams that Alabama's going to have to try to get through in order to uh, be- advance. So with, uh, I mean, this is a different Texas because hey, this is a different year in college football. I mean, the college football has changed. So and they're uh, they have the money to adapt to those changes. But like you said earlier with one of your other guests, it's getting down to you know the money, and they have the money to adapt to those changes more so than a lot of other schools. So they're going to be, they're going to be one of the top. Well, and, you know, and, and, you, know back, back. you know, if you, all you have to do is sit down with a Texas fan for about 30 seconds and they're going to tell you how great they are, how much money they've got. I mean, they're, they're going to remind yeah. you of that, right? I mean, it's, it's who they are. Uh, it's that their trophy cabinet is empty, but their checking account is not. It's full. Um, Look at well. It's not. I don't think it will be empty for. <laughs> let's put it this way: it won't be. Auburn won't get a championship before Texas does <laughs> very long. I don't want to hear your guys mention that too. Yeah, that's true. But uh, they got the, the kind of coach, and they can get the kind of players. You but, know, but you but know, now let's let's, years. Let, let's also go back here. Okay, I'm I'm not saying a divorce will put you in that situation. But Sark's now going through some family issues, right? Uh, he, he's that's a problem. Okay, mm-hmm. um, she was a balance for him. I'm not going to go into personal struggles in Tuscaloosa, but I know how important she was for getting him out of some of those valleys of life. Um, he struggled at times in Tuscaloosa. Sure. Uh, she was she was the one who said. Mm, I don't think you should do that because knowing the history of Sark, I mean, I'm not trying to bring up anybody's past, but, but he's got a past, right? I mean, he, he's, he's had some issues. He's had some big jobs. I don't believe in Sark as much as a head coach as I do as an offensive coordinator. And some of it, because he's been at some big jobs. He's been at some big jobs. He's been given the big opportunity. So, Last year was the first time he's ever coached a double-digit win team. I'm not sure yeah. that, that I'm ready to crown Sark as this next elite football coach. you got to show me something more than just one year. Yeah, I mean, Gene Kigley won a championship one year. Because so really, not <laughs> he, had, he had no business losing to Kalen DeBoer. Texas was more talented than, 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 than UW. Kalen DeBoer beat him with less talent. Twice. Yeah. No dose. Yeah, but uh, he beat Alabama with less talent. He did. So, he I did. mean, it, it, it's kind of, you know, it's a, but they call Alabama at the right time. There's no question about that. Uh, you know, if it, if it had been late in the season the way with, with, for him and Washington, it was, if, if Alabama played him late in the season, I think it's a different story. And, of course, but, but I mean, it's a, uh, I think they'll be. I think they'll get there sooner than later, and I think they're going to be a force to reckon with for the really for the foreseeable future. I think I think it'll be Alabama, Texas, and Georgia just because of their ability to get to buy players. That's that's going to be a huge thing, you know, going forward in football. I mean, we're turning it's college football is just officially turning into a minor league of NFL, and that's going to be a. I mean, that's that's going to come down to you know who can pay the players and attract them. And Texas is going to be one of those that do. Hey, you asked another question about the stealing. Well, I thought we'd already established that, you know, with the, what we've been saying about the national championship. But look, okay, let's go a little further. Okay, not just national championship, but uh, Miro wins the Heisman. That's okay. That's the ultimate stealing, I think, for this team. Uh, national I mean, championship well, you know, what, what, well, how, how about? I mean, how about this for a season? Okay, th- this is the this is the season. Okay, I mean, this this is the. It's not just winning a national title. What if we've been screaming about no more undefeated teams? Alabama runs the table undefeated. They beat Georgia here, win the SEC, national title, Heisman winner. Uh, are we, I mean, are we ready for that? 
I mean, it's the world. Forget about Alabama highly, fans. That will be highly unexpected. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I Jeff Jeffrey said, okay, we would kind of say, yeah, we can, we can kind of focus. We, I can kind of see that now. But all that other stuff, that wasn't on, any, that wasn't on my radar. <laughs> So that would be an ultimate ceiling there. But okay, you asked for the, the ultimate ceiling. That is the ultimate ceiling. And it's only a ceiling if it's realistic. That ceiling is it is realistic. Yeah, I mean it, it can be achieved by this by this team. So okay, I mean, I think that's the ultimate ceiling. A high a high trophy winner, undefeated national champion. That's the Hey, why don't we why don't we throw the why don't we throw Deion <laughs> Why don't we throw Deontay Lawson winning the Butkus in there too, right? I mean, the top linebacker. I mean, I mean, let's not stop there. I mean, that's the ceiling, my friend. Um, but do you do you really feel? Do you feel that that's obtainable? Um. Well, again, we're undefeated. That means both the offense and the defense are carrying their weight quite well. I right, so yeah, you know, we won't just be one sided, uh, you know, in a, on a season. So yeah, if if we're undefeated, especially with this era of college football, I think both sides are carrying their weight. So therefore, yeah, DeAndre Lawson could be the man that uh, becomes a sack machine in the in the defense. So yeah, that's possible too. But I add the fourth element to the ultimate ceiling <laughs> for this team. But it but it is it can be a reality. It's not an unachievable goal. So yeah, I agree with you. That's the ultimate ceiling. Hey Robert, appreciate you. Anything else, man? On a free for all Friday, you got any? I mean, I mean, I can't believe we're an hour and forty two minutes in the show. I mean, on a free oh, no, for all Friday. <laughs> yeah, that's I mean, point. well, you know, we've vented a lot of other things. I, I don't have anything to vent today. <laughs> okay, I didn't know what's okay, already been right. said. I'm just, I'm offering you that opportunity. I'm just, I'm <laughs> offering you. Uh, the opportunity. That's all I'm doing. Oh, I, oh, well, one quick thing though. That guy who stole that stole the valor from that vice president. Uh, yeah, dude, you claim you were uh, you were you went to Iraq and carrying a gun you know, to Iraq. I mean, not Iraq. Um, you went to Iraq, and and yeah, it uh, yeah, turns yeah, out yeah. You, 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 it turns out you never you didn't go in a fight. But yeah, that's that's another thing. And of course, with the old tampon in the boys' bathroom. Yeah, whatever. Hey, I, right, I, 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 hey, I don't, I don't know about you, man, but sometimes when you're out of toilet paper in the men's bathroom, uh, you know, maybe that's what he was thinking. Maybe that's what he was thinking. Uh, maybe that's why he wanted to put tampons in the boys' bathroom. Maybe that's part of it. Uh, I, I don't, no, it's like weird. a security blanket. You, you know what I mean? I mean, you go there and you're out of toilet paper, and and you're uh, maybe that's what it was for. But uh, who, oh, I, who did, knows? I did enjoy, uh, I did enjoy Trump and Elon Musk. If you listen to the actual interview, it was outstanding, which, and not what the media tells you the interview was. You listen to it for yourself. It's outstanding. Yeah. It's two very intelligent well, I, alpha yeah. male renaissance men uh, sharing their ideas. It was a conversation. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, I didn't call it an interview. It was a conversation, not an interview. Yeah. Well, I, I love the one thing that uh, you know Kamala started kind of trashing the interview, right, uh, on our social networks and kind of making fun of it, laughing. Um, Elon's comeback was uh, was met with crickets. All he said yeah. was, we could do the same thing. I'm inviting you <laughs> to the conversation. We could sit down and have a two-hour conversation. Uh, crickets, nothing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you want to trash it. You want trash conversation, but you don't want to have a conversation. And, and, and he open forums, that same with Trump. As long as you want to go, uh, yeah, okay, then, then don't complain about it. Then. <laughs> hey, Robert, I appreciate you, right, man. man. I hope you have a great rest of your day, man. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll continue here. Let's go to Tommy and Rami. This Tommy, good afternoon. You're in the game. I hope all is well. Hey, Tommy. Yeah, Ron. How are you, brother? I'm good. How are you? Oh, man, I'm good. Yeah, super. Outstanding. Well, great. Well, I have got some terrible news. Oh, terrible. Terrible. We better hope I coach win the national championship this year. Why? Why? My brother have just swore them off after this year. The university, not once, but not twice, but three times out of 
four years. He called and asked about our tickets. Oh, Mr. Brett, Mr. So-and-so, you did not. You haven't ordered your tickets. Oh, yes, ma'am. Here's the problem. After three hours going back and forth, talking back and forth, finally got somebody. He never talked to my office. He talked to a college student. I, August the 1st, he called, said, is everything good? Do I have to pay extra having my pr- ticket printed out? Like I'm having a pass. Is that taking care of it? Mr. Britton, you are just good. You're fine. Everything good. Well, he called and said, well, y'all mailed them out Monday. When am I going to get my tickets? Who are you? He gave her a count number. You haven't made a donation. You haven't paid for it. He said, y'all better find that money. I got the check. I'm going to call my trading union. And they he hauled around. Finally, he told him, I want to talk to somebody in the main office. I can't handle it. He said, no. Y'all have called back and been a different person. Let me tell you something. I'm brother was infuriated this morning. I was worried about his health. He just seemed like nobody can do that freaking job anymore. I hear the university begging for money. They ain't got enough people to work out there. They cut back since this pandemic. Let me tell you something. So did job, you get your tickets? Because we're all sitting on the edge of our seat. No. We'll get them tomorrow. They call them back about 11 o'clock. Set. They'll be we are putting them in the mail now. Okay, but I mean, you're, you're not like... Somebody I mean, sat it... on them butt again and didn't run the ticket off. He said, I got news for you. I'm not being laughing. They tell my brother on the radio about his problem. He said, you're discriminating against me because I don't have any in there. I don't think I'll mail no more. But you sure as hell like to take our money. So I doubt we're going to take it like next year. He let them have it. I thought, I was going to have to take him to the emergency room. I've never seen him so red in his face. And it's just like somebody will answer the question. So, I'm going to have to uh, be your best friend next to carry your stuff to go to a football game. He told me, it's not worth it no more. He said, you can't have no enjoyment. You worry about this, and you can't get a straight answer. He said, I've I've been been doing this for close to 70 years, supporting the university. He said, Tommy, I don't think I'm going to do it next year. I said, well, I told my brother, everything you got to come to an end sometime. I'd rather have my brother than I'll buy my football ticket, because it really upset him. He had done things like, I mean, they don't appreciate you anymore. When they say we love our fans, no, they are a bunch of liars. All they want is the Benjamin. As long as you can give them Benjamin, they love you. The day you got the question, they can't ask you. So I think they have lost all of my fans. I don't know. We got our ticket tomorrow or Monday. I don't know if he's going to go. He's so mad. Well, it sounds like uh, I, I I don't know uh, you know what to say, but uh, I mean at least you're getting money? well, but I mean you're getting the alternative. You are getting the tickets, fair? Well, yeah, but if he didn't call and you don't have to stay on top of them, so so I, I guess I'm, I'm I'm having a okay, so I'm I'm having a little bit of a hard time following. So so Tommy did, did they don't they want to not, mail out tickets. No more. They won't do everything by let try. You know, they don't care you've been getting taken. You know, we made fun of me on the radio about not having an internet and all this crap. Well, his phone don't work half the time. We miss stuff and they get hacked and stuff and all the problems they have out there. They can't, and we pay extra for this to have them print. And it's like, it's like they're giving birth to a moose or something. They don't get in a hurry to do anything. They don't care. The arrogant. And I don't, well, you know, we don't have any doubt. I got a receipt. I got this. I got things. I have checked my check going to the bank. 
y'all can take them my money. But they just sent them got answers. They don't want to solve the problem. Finally, after you have to argue with them for three hours, off and on, they solved the problem. Tommy, I'm glad you. I'm I'm glad you're getting your tickets. Uh, I'm, I'm I sorry that you had to go me. through. Yeah, I see them in my well, hand. But but Tommy, we're, I know that it's a big task, but we're going to tackle this. Getting Tommy a smartphone. Okay, we're we're. I don't know what we're going to do. Uh, if we're going to have to get Biscuit Bruce to to do the training session. Um, we're going to get you on board with these smartphones, no, okay? I They're not them, the devil. I offer them They're, seven years ago or before that to put a tower down here to help the community. You know, all this good thing. Oh, well, but you, yeah, well, we can give them an acre to. Oh, no, we need more than that, blah, blah, blah. And you can't have cows. You can't have. They tell me how I was going to live, what to do with the rest of my property. I'm trying. I want to screw y'all. When the company, these like, they don't want to do nothing to dictate. They want to keep up with who gets the ticket, what you do with the ticket. The University of Alabama and all schools are so scared you might make a dollar selling them tickets or selling something with the University of Alabama. They can't stand it. I got you. Know you. What? Well, Tommy, we're, 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 I'm, just happy, I'm just glad you got your tickets. I thought this conversation was going to end with... Uh, you telling me that your allegiance has went to the Auburn Tigers. I mean, I thought that's where we no, were going. No, no, no. I'm going to start getting, if that happens, I'll go get a motor detector and try and find all the hidden gold that them Yankees stole from the university, they say, from the Civil War. I'm going to waste my afternoon and try to get the university, find this lost gold toy in the Civil War. All these rich people out the university have a thing. I'm going to hide them for myself to get revenge on the university. I'm not going to donate it to the museum. I'm going to cash in. Or I'm going to melt it down and say, screw you. I got you. Tommy, give me, give me, because we've, we've taken up uh, your call, which, hey, I'm glad. I mean, maybe your brother needs to call in a free for all Friday and get it off his chest. No, 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 the... no. No. Me and you would not ever be on the radio. I've never seen him like this. Y'all think I'm bad? I mean, I thought he was going to blow all his gaskets. I got you. I mean, well, Tommy, uh, I don't have enough time to ask you what the ceiling is, but uh, can you do it in 10 seconds? National Championship. Fair enough. Tommy, I appreciate you. Roll Tide. Thank you for letting me in. I, I'm glad I'm glad to be able to help you. That's what this show's all about, man. I well, got to break. I mean, it's, just, it's ridiculous, Ron. It really is. It does not I mean, it's all these good treating their fans. Well, I, I told you a long time ago, you were not a priority. Uh, I know. And, and, and that's not just you. That, that's all of no. the above. I got to run, Tommy. I'm, I'm, I I'm have late. A good, have a good weekend. I'll do later. Thank you. We'll continue with more of the game. Tide 100.9-1230 WTBC. You're home of Alabama Crimson Tide Sports. See if it makes sense for your business. Go to townsquarelocal.com for a free demo of the Townsquare Business Management Platform. Visit townsquarelocal.com. That's townsquarelocal.com. Tide 100.9, Tuscaloosa weather. The sky partially sunny this afternoon. The chance of a few scattered strong storms through tonight. The high today, 95. The low tonight, 74. Tomorrow, a mix of sun and clouds with a few scattered showers and strong storms around. The high, 93. I'm James Spann on the ABC 3340 Weather Center on Tide 100.9. Want to jump into any of the shows? Call Tide 100.9 right now at 205-342-9904. Well, somebody answer that damn phone! That's 205-342-9904. Here 
Yes, I'm going to take Paul on the other side. Paul and Lincoln, get ready. We're coming to you in a couple of minutes. I do remind you about the standard pizza, the standardbama.com, University Boulevard, home of the 20-inch pizza pie, pepperoni, meat lovers, cheese, design your own, the cheese sticks, the mac and cheese bites. You will find those, the wings, the boneless wings, the standard Bama.com, the standard Bama.com. You know, you can go in and actually have a pizza uh, that's named after Ryan Williams. My understanding is he actually loves the standard pizza. I got catches everything, right? Even pizzas. Uh, the standard Bama.com, the standard Bama.com, home of the 20 inch pizza pie, pepperoni, meat lovers, cheese, design your own full service restaurant, dine in or available by DoorDash, the standard Bama.com. Com. We'll continue with more of the game. Tide 100.9, 1230 WTBC. Your home of Alabama Crimson Tide Sports. And if they don't have what you need, they'll get it. Cypress Supply, 2036 62nd Avenue, Tuscaloosa. Cypress-Supply.com. WTBC Tuscaloosa and W265CG Tuscaloosa, a town square media station. Tide 100.9 and streaming on the Tide 100.9 app. From the Fox Sports Studios in Los Angeles, here's Isaac Lohenkron. The Minnesota Vikings have officially placed rookie quarterback J.J. McCarthy on season-ending injured reserve and have signed free agent quarterback Matt Corral. McCarthy, of course, recently diagnosed with a torn right meniscus. Corral spent time with the Patriots last season, most recently played in the UFL this spring for the Birmingham Stallions. NFL media reports Bengals place kicker Evan McPherson has agreed to a three-year $16.5 million extension. 49ers head coach Kyle Shanahan told reporters projected starting left guard Aaron Banks broke his pinky finger and had surgery on it this morning. Shanahan said that the 49ers hope to have Banks back in time for the regular season opener. One Major League Baseball game going on right now at Wrigley Field. The Chicago Cubs held a 5-2 lead over the Toronto Blue Jays in the top of the ninth inning. Deep paint spot, Philip Williams, locally owned and operated since 1971. Quality paint, expert advice. Bigger medium projects, I recommend reading the Airless Paint Sprayer. Northport, right off McFarland Boulevard, right past Highway 43. 15th Street in Tuscaloosa, close to the Hardin's Bakery. 1971. Philip Williams, locally owned and operated. The paint spot, you'll find the quality paint, the expert advice. If you're redoing a deck, visit us at 3537 Skyland Boulevard East or check us out online, bmwoftuscaloosa.com. BMW of Tuscaloosa, take your dreams for a drive. Big Mike's downtown Moundville, only about 15 minutes from where I'm located, also in Gunnersville, Alabama, Thomasville, Andalusia, Auburn, Alabama, Orange Beach. You'll find one of the best steaks in the state of Alabama, voted by the Alabama Cattlemen's Association and many other great publications recognizing the great ribeye, the seafood entrees. You'll find those. The Great Seward City Brewing Company on Saturday, August 24th. Doors open up at 3 p.m. Tickets are 10 bucks with proceeds benefiting the Tuscaloosa Metro Animal Shelter. Learn more at ashfest.org. I got spirit, I got faith. ain't our home nah not even close they camouflage like we fighting some ghosts you start to doubt everything that you know i feel the heat and it's starting to show they try to break hey, little toby mac that so reminds me we've got the pigskin kickoff uh, that's coming up here in just a couple of days august the 26th that's here in tuscaloosa john hannah the pro football hall of fame college football hall of fame one of the greatest offensive linemen to ever play the game on the college or the pro level john hannah uh, will be a part of there. And when you look at top 10 Patriots of all time, he's number two. You know who number one is? Tom Brady. That can give you a little bit of an explanation there. And I'm looking at the autograph items that they've got for the silent auction. Uh, it is going to be off the charts. When you look at the amount of stuff that they've got um, able to offer, you've got Nate Oates, you've got John Hanna, Cedric Burns, 
And it, the number is University Church of Christ, 205-553-3001, 205-553-3001. Or you can call David Harden at 205-454-7088, 205-454-7088. We're doing a free-for-all Friday sponsored by Brian Harden Construction. We're always powered by Tuscaloosa Toyota. Let's go to Paul and Lincoln. Paul, good afternoon to you, sir. Welcome into the game in Tuscaloosa. Ryan, let's all join hands and um, at the end of the week and embrace the suck. That's S A U C K, um, and that A U, by the way, stands for the Auburn Tigers. Mm. And we all it is. we all know they suck. We all know they suck. That's S A U C K. You know, and I was uh, looking here at RJ's top 134. I don't see them in the top here. Uh, let's see how far they have. Woo! Woo! 34th in the country? Mm. 34th. Mm-mm. Wow. 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 Ryan, do you think, you think when they hired Hugh Hefner, Parson Freeze, do you think that uh, they used the Auburn Creed in identifying their head coach, you know, uh, impeccable character, impeccable integrity, a leader of young men, a role model. Do you think they used that when they hired Hugh Hefner and Hunter Harson? Do you think they did, Ryan? Uh, that would be an answer of no. You mean that wasn't a prerequisite of hiring Hugh Hefner and Hunter Freeze? Are you, are you kididding me? I yeah, thought, it was a winning. I thought the it Auburn was a winning Creed, at, I, I thought yeah, the a, Auburn Creed was a, was a living document, Ryan. Winning at all costs. That's what that was all about. Oh, oh, okay. I mean, yeah. Okay. I mean, listen, Paul. I don't know about you, but he had four wins against Nick Saban. Yeah, he had four. Yeah, in his mind, he uh, he had four wins, even though the scoreboard said different. But yeah, in in his mind, he he should have had four more wins against uh, against uh, poor old Nick. You know. So um, yeah, that's just uh, I just showed you that that is. That just shows you what a fraud, what a fraud program, what a fraud fan base. I mean, they 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 will swallow into. The, and you talking about fraud? Their media are they are the the biggest um, uh, perpetrators of fraud. That uh, I mean, they're they're pretty they're pretty bad. They're they're almost like a the the media that covers the uh, the Democratic Party. Um, they, they <laughs> it's, a, it's an Did absolute joke. Did you just joke. compare Philip Marshall to Rachel Madcow? I, 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 well, yeah, yeah, I did. Uh, Rachel mm. Madcow, Joy Reed, uh, George Slapanopoulos. Yeah, yeah, I did. And I could go on and on and on, uh, Ryan. Hey, here's another Joe Scarborough. You talking about a, you talking about a punk. Joe Scarborough, a, a graduate of the University of Alabama, I might add. You talking about a complete fraud? <laughs> you know, he tried to remember. He tried to sell us about two months ago that that Oatmeal Joe was at the top of his game. Remember that? He interview? did. He oh, did. He, he did. Yes, he, he did. Was the, this is the this is the best version of Joe Biden that I've ever seen, and 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 I've known him for fifty years almost. What a complete idiot you are, Joe. You're a complete. You're an you're a complete fool, Joe Scarborough. My gosh. <laughs> this clown has got an Alabama diploma hanging on his wall. What a joke. You're a joke, Scarborough. Uh, anyway, hey, uh, well, hey, better, sp- right? sp- speaking of Alabama grads, you mentioned Joe Scarborough. How about uh, uh, Caitlin, yeah, the Kate, unbiased? Caitlin Collins. Uh, yeah, yeah. She, she, Collins. she really, yeah. she really yeah. makes me feel yeah. proud. As uh, she, oh yeah. yeah, she's a she's a. She's a stand-up ambassador for the university. Listen, yeah. she's got her. I don't. If she will, she can. That's her beliefs. That's fine. But but you're an idiot. You're a complete idiot. You're a fraud. Well, okay, but, but here's the thing. Don't pretend to be something you're not. And, and, exactly. and that's where, exactly. like, like the other day that she was on a show in New York City. I guess Stephen Colbert. Uh, and, and, yeah, yeah. and she was, you know, talking to a group of liberals and she was trying to convince, Hey, I'm, I'm unbiased. And they started laughing and they go, no, yeah, they, we are, we're, yeah. we're unbiased. And they she, laughed, she's like, they, they uh, laughed her off, no, you're off not. stage. 
Yeah. Yeah. And she they, said, they, hey, was that, a, was, was that a laugh line? <laughs> well, she realized right. that she realized that those ethics classes that she took back there in Reese Pfeiffer, uh, uh-huh. I think she was reminded, Ooh, I have really violated my professors, but, um, absolutely. Yeah. Ryan, are you better off today than you were four years ago, Ryan? Seriously. I'm being serious. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 I, mean, I don't you? know about okay. you, but I love, I love you, paying $9 for a loaf of bread. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I know. I, mean, I know. Because uh, I, Ryan, did I you see today? Well, well, see, see, I, I don't eat as much. So see that that's where I'm I'm winning. I'm not eating as much oh, because of yeah. Well, see, if you ate like you used to, you you would say uh, no. I'm I'm not better off than I was four years. Absolutely, ago. Is that, is yes. that right? Yeah, that's a hundred percent. Yep, and 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 maybe that's their plan. Maybe that's part of it. They want you to, you know, if we. Um, but it it really is puzzling to me. Okay, that. <laughs> I listened to her explain her economic pitch earlier, and I'm just, it's, is the American people this dumb? Are, are we really this dumb? Are we this dumb that we can sit here and we can literally say what you just said, and we could go, yeah, hey, it's like getting hit with a head with a broomstick, right? Over and over and over for the last three and a half years. And what do you do? You say I need more. I don't need just four. I want eight years of this. Come on, people. People, 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 people. Paul, did I, uh, did I, did, did the government get us? Did the government get us? Uh, did Paul go away? Paul? No, Paul? Hmm. That's kind of odd. Hmm. Jackson, are we still uh, good to go? I think we're, we're uh, still. I think Paul's got some technical difficulties right now. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, look, sounds like uh, you know. <laughs> uh, well, I think we. Uh, okay. Hmm. Isn't that funny how that works? They're listening to us. They're listening to us. We'll break here. We'll come back. Maybe we'll get Paul back on. I know we're going to get to Josh and Georgia as well and many others. T-Town, Tide, 100.9, WTBC. You're home of Alabama Crimson Tide Sports. Now, this hour's West Alabama real-time news update from the Tuscaloosa Thread Newsroom. Concerns about the intense heat levels have prompted the extension of the heat advisory for Alabamians. Plus, you can factor in the potential for damaging winds this weekend as well. For the full details on the weather outlook for West Alabama, be sure to tap the free Tuscaloosa Thread app. And exciting news for the Alabama Crimson Tide football program. Three offensive linemen and a surprise defender were named to the Lombardi Award presented to the top linemen in college football. Get 24-7 local news coverage and sports updates when you download the free Tuscaloosa Thread app and sign up for twice daily email newsletters. Tide 100.9 Traffic. Tuscaloosa traffic now from the Townsend Nissan Traffic Center, TGIF to you. We are moving as we typically do. That rhymed, I know. And so we got 69 long line of delays on the northbound lanes at Union Chapel Road. This is going to thicken you up way back to Cellar Sprayberry Parkway. And we've also got our usual on Lurling. Hey, a national nonprofit offers more than a thousand free online resources for youth and high school sports coaches, parents, students, and administrators. Visit PCADevZone.org. Every Friday here on The Game is always powered by Brian Harden Construction, industrial contractors and fabrication, laser cutting, CNC machines, reverse engineering, experience you can count on. Let's build something together. BeHardenCONST.com, and we're looking for people to become a part of our winning team, structural welders, pipe fitters. You'll find those at Brian Hart Construction. Let them guide you, and if they're not able to help you, they can guide you in the right direction. It's Brian Harden Construction every Friday made possible by Brian Harden Construction here on The Game on Tide 100.9. With only 43 seconds remaining, facing a fourth and goal from the 31-yard line at Jordan here Stadium, quarterback Jalen Milrow finds himself under immense pressure scrambling to connect with Isaiah Bond in the corner of the end zone. 
for a miraculous come-from-behind victory over Auburn. The jaw-dropping 27-24 result came on the 10th anniversary of the kick six. Daniel Moore is proud to announce 4th and 31, his upcoming oil painting featuring the now famous Gravedigger play. New Life Art is now accepting pre-orders for limited edition fine art prints and canvases of 4th and 31. See the preliminary pencil sketch for the artist's full color painting at danielwarart.com. Pre-order. Locally owned and operated since 1971 with two locations to serve you. 15th Street, Tuscaloosa and McFarland Boulevard in Northport. Online at paintspot.org. Blue Spring Living Water is located in Bluntsville, Alabama, Blunt County, about an hour north of Birmingham. Blue Spring Living Water is harvested and bottled from a centuries-old natural spring on a private family farm. Blue Spring is an all-natural water source that flows just under a million gallons a day. They have partnered with Waterway of Alabama, and they've been in the water delivery business for over 30 years to have Blue Spring Living Water delivered right to your home, right to your front door every month. New customers get their five jugs for $50, and the empties are exchanged every month for new ones. I know we have it at the Fowler household. We drink more water because of bluespringlivingwater.com. You can sign up at 205-602-3426. Talk to someone directly. Blue Spring Living Water can also be found. Mark Smart, downtown Northport, Publix, Piggly Wiggly, and in the southern part of our listing area, Rouse's Supermarket. BlueSpringLivingWater.com. Tide 100.9, Tuscaloosa weather. The sky partially sunny this afternoon. The chance of a few scattered strong storms through tonight. The high today, 95. The low tonight, 74. Tomorrow, a mix of sun and clouds with a few scattered showers and strong storms around. The high, 93. I'm James Spann on the ABC 3340 Weather Center on Tide 100.9. It's the longest-running sports show in Tuscaloosa. You're listening to The Game with Ryan Fowler on Tide I don't know what happened to Paul. I think the uh, the deep state must have got him. Uh, if anybody finds Paul, uh, please send him back our way. Please, please, because uh, that was a little weird. That was a little weird. I mean, it, it went complete silence. So uh, I guess that's another one we could shop up. Uh, I don't know. I mean, but somebody check on Paul. I mean, did the Clintons, did, did they did they wipe him out? Did uh, did, did he get the Joe treatment? Uh, did, did they did they say, yep, yeah, listen, you're you're you're, you're no longer going to go on, and when we say you're not going to go on, we mean it. Let's go to Josh in Georgia. Josh, good afternoon. You're in the game. I hope all is well. Good afternoon, Ryan. How are you, buddy? I'm good. I'm good. If it, anybody finds Paul, please please send him back our, our way. We were uh, he yeah, was on a roll. You know who can take Paul off the radio airwaves? Kamala can. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yes, she she did not oh, want him to bring up that uh, loaf of bread is nine dollars a piece or eight dollars for a gallon of milk. Yeah, and, uh, and my sweet tea yeah. three fifty a piece. Doggone it! <laughs> Where are you shopping at? That's actually cheaper than I'm paying. Where are you shopping? I, at? Well, I I shop at Walmart, but I mean my loaves. I was I started paying when I started buying my loaves. I was paying two fifty. And now it's up to three fifty, so a dollar ain't uh, terrible, but it's still three fifty. I'm over four dollars a gallon, and I'm also. Uh, I'll, I'll check my receipt, and I'll, I'll make sure I'm not lying to you. So yeah, yeah, and, I buy uh, one me, gallon of unsweet and one sweet. gallon of sweet. I mix my own, and right. uh, I think I'm at I think I'm at four twenty nine. So uh, Publix I'm is three forty eight a gallon. Okay, four fifty. Uh, so four fifty nine. So uh, yep, yep. But but uh, hey, like I said, I don't know about you, but I love getting hit in the head with a broomstick. Yeah. So anyway, well, I have heard that, and I want to jump right into this. I have heard your question of the day yesterday. You asked us the what's the floor, but today you went the exact opposite and asked what is the ceiling. And so, you know, yesterday was really hard for me to do, and uh, I was like, man, you just 
I almost thought she's desperate out things to talk about, but I realized you got to look at this and be like, hey, if this is all fake and all the hype we see is fake. But now it's like, if all this is real, all the hype, all the things we hear about and see in practice and y'all put out, if all this is real, what is the ceiling? I have to go with Stephen and Raleigh undefeated national championship and probably even Milro for Heisman. And all of that would happen. I mean, that's the ceiling. And that's just based on this coaching staff with this talent because this coaching staff, I believe in them from what I've got to see and hear. They talk the talk. They walk the walk. They're getting these players to do the same thing. They're getting these players to practice. And uh, I was hoping if you haven't posted it on Twitter or if you have, I need to go look at it. That video Softy was talking about, about Coach Sepp getting in the offensive lineman's face before that Pac-12 title game. Hoping you put put that up, but I don't know if you have yet. I um, have not. I have not. I haven't. Um... I want I want to see that. Dude, he was getting me fired up because I know, I told you, I think I may have sent you one video I saw from uh, Coach E on Instagram about Coach Shep. Dude, that boy. I mean, I've talked about it before. He fires me up. And you say you get to go to practice at 9 o'clock in the morning and you get fired up at 9 o'clock in the morning. And I don't even know if you've had a tea or a coffee at that point, have you? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, nine o'clock in the morning. Yes, I've had my first glass of half and half tea. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So you guys, but, uh, have, you guys, have got to quit putting in that sweet tea. It's it's half sweet, half unsweet. Okay. I mean, I mean, Josh, my doctor could be listening, and and I got to stay uh, right. Well, I know. can say sweet. I know you have to. You have, and I know you have to restrict yourself. <laughs> and say half and half. So, I mean, I'm straight sweet tea until somebody tells me to stop. Uh, if I'm on life support and I've got an IV in my arm, if it's full of sweet tea, you know, that's what I feel like in my bloodstream more than blood. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, I guess that's part of being raised in the South. So it's sweet tea and fried chicken, right? I mean, is there anything else essential besides besides church? Is it sweet tea, fried chicken, and church? Is it the three essentials for the South? Tea, chicken, slaw, and mashed potatoes, man. There you um, go. Uh, boo, man, that sounds good. Oh, it sounds Dude, good. Dude, I'm telling so, you. But I'm uh, serious. Uh, national championship, Mill Roper Heisman, undefeated season uh, at what, 15 and 0, 16 and 0. Um, and wouldn't it just be like Alabama to do something before that's never been done? Like it should be us. I'm just saying, I know it's not going to happen, uh, but they say never say never. But it would be just like Alabama to do something that's never been done. And that's be the first three-peat champion. We should have done it a couple of times already throughout history. If you look at our great history, you run through the credentials every day. We've talked about years on end how different teams should have went three in a row. But seriously, if somebody goes three in a row, it should be us first. Don't know if that's going to happen in the current college football. But if somebody goes undefeated with the new college football, 16-0, and 17-0, whatever that ends up being, it should be us. Really, I mean, shouldn't it? Just to add another, we done it first to our to our list. So, because I know Clemson made a big deal that first time they went fifteen and zero. Oh my, whoopee, whoopee doo, you know. And uh, you know, the Bull Pups made a big deal about they finally got back to back titles for the for the first time ever and won a national title for the first time in forty one years and all this and that. Yeah, but you haven't had a Heisman winner. Uh, your coach, I don't know what Kirby's doing over there, but. He's still getting guys locked up. I don't know what y'all are doing to want to go charge through a brick wall and run red lights and stuff like that with a car, but hey, whatever. So, well, but wouldn't it be uh, just wouldn't it be just like us to you know? Go I thought and RJ, say, hey, we did it RJ Young said it a, a couple of hours ago at uh, at what three o'clock, about an hour and you know thirty minutes ago. He said when you when you look at the dogs uh, based on their behavior throughout the off season, they don't feel like a you know a dialed in football team. I think that's a fair statement. They're not. They are not. They one hundred percent are not a dialed in football team because winning has ultimately went to their heads. What is the old adage? Heavy is the head that wears the crown. They wore the crown for two solid years pretty much and they're feeling the heaviness of it. And what was it that it was it's a quote from Spider Man in the comics and the movies, with great power comes great responsibility. They are feeling the heaviness of what it feels like to be on top. And I personally like being at number five. I disagree with R.J. Young at being number nine. I mean, that's him saying, and I know everybody's like, it's not Nick Saban anymore. It's not this. It's not that. No, it may not be exactly what it was. No, but we're still Alabama. We still have a script day. We still have a football history that you run through. 
every day at 5 o'clock the credentials of the greatest team in America. And until somebody else can do something about it, I'm going to sing it, I'm going to preach it, I'm going to scream it, I'm going to get up in people's grills about it and be like, hey, 18 national titles, 30 SEC titles, all this, all that. We are the best. We are sitting at number five, and I'm just fine with that. I told a guy at church Wednesday night, he's been a fan. I said, Josh, his name's Josh, actually. I said, Josh, I'd rather be the hunter than the hunted. The hunted is the bull pups, and that's a fact. So I like sitting at number five. I'm just fine with that right now. So, anyways, that's my so, free for all Friday rant, and that's the best case scenario for me. So, hey. Got it. Oh, you're well, going to say so what? No, I was going to say yeah, anything else. To add. No, I was just no, going to say it. anything else. Okay. That's it. All right. So, roll tide, okay. buddy. Roll tide, man. Thank you so much. We appreciate yeah, that. Uh, let's continue with more phone calls, and we go to Jumbo. Jumbo, good afternoon. You're in the game. I hope all is well. How we doing today, Ryan Fowler? Good, good. Jumbo, I like this. I mean, this is Mr. Positive Jumbo. I like it. I can hear it in your voice. You're not even playing my music, and I'm fired up, ready to go. I'm telling you. Hey. I mean, yesterday was probably one of the most positive. Uh, I've heard Jumbo in a long, 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 long time. Yeah, if you remember last uh, August, I said they had to prove to me, and I, I do recall saying that. But, uh, man, I'm telling you, Josh, great call there. I mean, you can tell he's pumped. Ryan, <clears throat> we are 14, 15 days away from Alabama football. Two weeks from tomorrow is game day, and it's here. You might as well say it's here. There's a high school game on the night I'm going to watch from Georgia, but it's high school football. But, uh, listen, let me, let me run something past you. Okay. Does everybody realize that, well, We're listening, I, don't want to get, I, don't, I don't want to get emotional on this, but we live in the greatest state in the U.S. We have two heavyweight boxing champions that come from this state, Evander Holyfield from Atmore, and of course, Deontay from here. 18-time national champion football team. Two of the greatest coaches that ever walked the sideline. And we had the greatest country music band ever to come out of here. And, I mean, we are Alabamians. How, how blessed and how proud can we be of where we were born and what we have? Fair comment. It, it, it's re it's remarkable. I mean, we're 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 kind of playing with house money. We are, but the thing about it is, like Josh said, you know, I'm I'm going to uh, Pigeon Forge next Sunday for a vacation. Then I come back Friday right before um, the the first game. But I'm going to walk in just like I always have. I'm going to go to Mel's diner. I'm going to holler roll tide. If they start their crap, let them start it. I don't care. But I'm going up there with my guns loaded. And, and I'm going to let it rip, boy. I'm going to go after it. So I'm uh, looking forward to this. I'm excited. I can't wait till 6 o'clock on Saturday the 31st. Man, I cannot wait. I cannot wait. This is going to be awesome. And I'm telling you, we're going to see a team that is going to really shock the world this year. And, and they're going to bring it. I think I really believe this team is going to bring, bring it. I'm just, man, I'm, I'm as tight as a pig rolling around in mud right now. I'm telling you. Ooh, Lord, give me some corn cobs to chew on. I'll be good to go. All right. So, but, but you've you've already um, you've already kind of went out on that limb yesterday. You refused to give us the low case, uh, worst case scenario. Well, I don't see it. I mean, honestly, I don't. And like I told you, if it happens, I'll eat every bit of crow you throw at me. But I just don't see it. Everything is in place. It seems like all the cylinders are fired together. You know, everybody out there is on the same page. They know what their mission is. They know what they're gonna they got to do. The chip is on their shoulder, and, and I think these guys have something to prove. And not only that, the coaching staff is is, is right there, and, and they're just as pumped up as the players. So, man, I'm excited. I'm telling you, I, if I can go to the game, I go. But I'm not gonna be able to go. Which is fine. I'm just gonna stay at home and watch it all day. But um, man, I'm I'm pumped, dude. I'm telling you, I, I can't wait. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. 
I just wish I could have met Coach DeBoer. But I didn't, and that's all right. And I would love to go to the thing on the 26th, but we're going to be up yonder. And uh, you know how much I love John Hanna. But Coach Oates is going to be there, too. And, and from my understanding, he was really uh, – he was like Coach Saban. He was really thrilled about his hat. So, But, man, I'm, I'm telling you, I can't wait. I can't wait. Cannot wait. Well, that uh, – you, you're going to so, – so when are you going to be gone from when to when? Well, I'll leave next Sunday morning and then come back next Friday after – I'll leave Sunday morning on the 25th. And then come okay. back yeah. – um, and the afternoon of the 30th. So high school football will be, you know, County High will be playing their second game. They're going to uh, Viger, I think. And then uh, they play Central the week before. And I'm going to try to make that game next Friday night. So, um, but I got a lot to get ready for before I go up there. But I got to go. and It's going to be a good time. And, um, man, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to give it to the Tennessee folks. I'm telling you, I'm going to, I'm going to have them. I'm all have it. But golly, man, I mean, how can you not be excited? I mean, I am really pumped. This is this is one of the, the best seasons in sixty one years that I've I've really looked forward to and I'm I'm ready to roll up my sleeves and go at it. Jumbo, what's up? You got a free for all Friday ranch? You got anything that's bothering you? Anything you need to get off the chest? You got a neighbor that's uh throwing rocks at your cat or uh I mean, letting a dog poop in the yard or I mean anything that you've uh I mean, we got to make sure that you have a stress-free weekend. Well, if um, Jackson's over there, tell him to look up a WWE wrestler by the name of Kamala. That is Kamala Harris's dad. But I understand what now? this one. What, what, what now? Kamala. His name is Kamala. You've got in head, a headhunter is what he was called. He was a professional wrestler back in the 80s and 90s. If you look that up, I've, I've made him Kamala's dad. So when you see the picture of him, you'll start laughing. So it's, uh, you just got to look at the picture. That's Kamala's dad, and then okay. you'll see you'll, you'll see everything fit together. But this this woman's on TV hollering about communists now, and this tiny Tim dude. Now I'm gonna tell you something right now. Uh, uh, Copper Deck, I don't like him, but I, if this guy here, oh, who? If I ever come uh, face to face with this guy, I don't care who's around him. He, he's getting a body slam. This guy gets up here and says he done this, he done that in the military, and you guys know I, how I am about my military. I I don't exaggerate about it. Nothing. What I did is what I did. I come out as an E six. I didn't come out here when I retired and say, oh, I was a, a senior chief or master chief petty officer. I did this. I did that. I told exactly what I done, where I was. And what happened? And this guy's telling all these lies. I mean, granted, he did his service. I get that. I'm, I'm okay, but don't come out and lie about it, dude. Because right now, I, I'm telling you, if, if somebody can let me cut loose on this guy in the ring or whatever, oh, whoo, Lord, have mercy! I ripped this guy a new one. I would rip him a new one. Hello? Well, Jumbo, no, no, I'm just listening to you because you have a right to say what you did. I mean, as you said, you served uh, over 20 years, uh, retired yep. in the U.S. Navy, and uh, I respect the heck out of those who have given us the opportunity to sit around here talking college football. And, uh, you know, I know it's uh, highly disrespectful to claim something you're not, but, uh, you know, I have to ask the question that I asked Paul, is the American people this dumb? I don't know. If they vote for Kamala and Tim, yes, they are. And they deserve what they get. And I'm not looking forward to it at all. And I'm telling you right now, if I could become a Canadian, I'd go up there and live with them. Oh, well, I'd go up there and live in Canada. We got uh, uh, Blueberry with Steve. With Blueberry Steve. Blueberry Steve. Yeah, yeah Blueberry Steve, might, he might welcome us uh, up in Canada. I mean, the last four years have been, holy cow. I mean, it's been awful. Um I mean, when Trump was president, gas was a dollar sixty nine a gallon. Now it's uh, two ninety nine to, to three oh nine a gallon in some places around here. Food has gotten outrageous, and it's going to get worse. And, and these two, Ryan, I hope the rapture comes before. <laughs> I hope the rapture comes before the, if they do win this thing, get it off us because I, it, it's going to be a nightmare and. It's not going to be a good time to be an American. Not with, not with them two clowns in office. I, I'm just, 
I don't see a good thing ahead. So, uh, but I don't think the American people is going to let that happen. If they do, then the ones who voted for it to get her in there, they deserve what happens to them. Amen. Thanks, Jumbo. Hey, thanks, guys. Y'all have a good weekend. Uh, roll Tide. Hey, Rob, back to you. We'll break here. We'll come back. We'll get Bubba on the other side. Wayne and Destin, I see you. We're coming your way next. T-Town Tide 100.9, 1230 WTBC, your home of Alabama Crimson Tide Sports. eatery there on the fringe of the campus of the University of Alabama, close enough that you can smell the championships. The Nukes Q sandwich, still the number one sandwich across the franchise. The French dip sandwich I think is going to challenge for that number one spot. The double club, the single club, you can pair those up with a great sandwich, salad, California style pizzas, all available for catering from a group of five to 500, a small office party to a large corporate event. Joel Bromfield, they've done a great job for my family. They'll do a great job. to Druid City Brewing Company on Saturday, August 24th. Doors open up at 3 p.m. Tickets are 10 bucks with proceeds benefiting the Tuscaloosa Metro Animal Shelter. Learn more at ashfest.org. Pat's Floors and Gourmet Baskets in downtown Tuscaloosa, 1010 Queen City Avenue for over 60 years. They've been serving our community they specialize in a large inventory of fresh flowers, weddings, gourmet fruit baskets. If you're trying to lift someone's spirits, it is Pat's Floors Gourmet Baskets by calling 205-345-5093. Delivery options are available, but it's more than just flowers at Pat's Floors and Gourmet Baskets, 1010 Queen City Avenue. Or your living room, wherever. Grab some cheesy street chalupas at a participating Taco Bell today. For a limited time only while supplies last. The best place for your high school football coverage is right here on Tide 100.9. And online on Tide100.9.com. you about Med Center Urgent Care Family Medicine. No appointment necessary. The super doctors who live and work in our area, it is Med Center Urgent Care Family Medicine. Med Center Urgent Care Family Medicine. I uh, also want to remind you about our good folks at Southern Owl House, 1530 McFarland Boulevard. 1530 McFarland Boulevard. The Friday evening specials are very simple. Coffee rub prime rib. Oh, yeah, that's great. The smoked pork chop. Yes, sir. Fried grouper. Over Cajun Alfredo, you can find that. Uh, if you're looking for a dinner special tomorrow, uh, they'll bring back the coffee rub prime rib. Uh, they'll add a chicken parmesan pasta, the blackened mahi mahi. Uh, some great options when you look at there. And do not leave there without having some of that caramel apple bread pudding. It is Southern Owl House, 1530 McFarland Boulevard. And coming soon, Southern Owl House Dockside. Got it. Lake Tuscaloosa, Hub 43. You're going to get ready for a new Southern Owl House. The old one is going to be there. It'll, it'll The original one uh, will remain at 1530, but they're expanding, opening up another new Southern Owl House. Let's continue right here, and we go to Bubba. Bubba, Northport. Bubba, good afternoon. You're in the game. I hope all is well. It's all well, my friend. I have things in, in, on the beach. Oh, it's good. The beach is still here. Um they haven't they haven't raised the price of inflation on the beach, but uh, you never know. Could could happen. It, is everybody at Tide one hundred point nine down there? Because I know Gary Harris is down there now. So <laughs> uh, Gary is Gary is at Orange Beach, which is uh, kind of opposite. Oh, okay. from where, yeah, yeah, yeah. From where I'm at, but uh, yeah, we're well. It's it's we're trying to get the batteries recharged before. Uh, the season, uh, it's it's something I think I, I, I think it, I may have learned from him. But uh, it's a long season when you look at it. Uh, the world of college football, we love our job. I, I think Gary would tell you the same thing. There you um, go. But it it can be a you know it can be a long season. And once I went out and looked at that Alabama football team, and I said, uh, "Hey, this team's going to be playing for a while." Yeah, they're, they're going to be playing right. for a while. So. On, on, on his show earlier today, Tom called in. They were talking about 
the Alabama, the 1988 Alabama Penn State game where Derek Thomas just went off on him. You know, had one of the best games of his career, that game. But they kept saying that the game was in Leisure Field, but it wasn't. It was in Bryant Denny Stadium that game. Okay. In 1988. I did, yeah, I didn't. I didn't hear it, so uh, I'm not sure I can add too much to that. Well, well, no, I was just saying. I just wanted, you know, to get everybody's correction. I was at that game. I was actually sitting on the 50 yard line at that game. So, but that was a great game. But uh, I, I, I highly disagree with your last guess about. Being nice, I, I I just I got to thinking, you know. I, I think we're going all the way now. I, I really do. You know, I may I may eat crow like jumbo, but I I I I, I, I think I I think we're gonna go all the way. Gotcha. Well. um Hey, hey what what I, do you I think, think you Dawson would have said? Well, I think Dawson would have said that this team was going to win a national title. I don't care if it was me out there coaching. Right. Uh, that's what he would have said. Right. But, uh, you know, I think, was, you know, yesterday I didn't get the call in, and I was still going on my 10-2. and two, But after uh, the more I read and the more I hear about what comes out of practice, I'm thinking, you know, I think we can get the – I think we can run it all. I really do. Uh, so do I. I. I think there's a chance, Bubba. Um, if, you, if I'd have told you on January the 10th get, that, that Alabama would have a chance, uh, probably not so much. If we, if we can keep everybody somewhat healthy, and I think that I hope the coaching staff on some of these weaker games let some of the backups play because if we go all the way, we may need those backups. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess. I mean, you 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 better. Uh, I think this is something that's a little yeah. bit different. I, when you look back at Coach Saban, uh, there's there's a lot of things that you can't question. Uh, one of them is being right. loyal. He was very loyal to his football players. Yes, I was at that game in Starkville when Tua got Tua, Tua got hurt. He had no business being out on that football field at all. That game was over way before then. But that's my uh, opinion. You well, know, opinion and, well, I know that everybody has them. Well, I think he would probably agree with you uh, when you, you know, when you look back at this, uh, that particular play. I think Tua convinced Coach Saban to let him go back in, and uh, it, it, it cost right. him. Yeah. Yep, it did. Probably All right, man, y'all have a good weekend. Yep, you too, Bubba. Thank you, man. Let's go to Wayne in Destin. Wayne, good afternoon. You're in the game. Hello, yeah. Wayne. Hey, hey, Wayne. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. You sound good. Hey, Ryan. So what are you doing on the beach, man? What's going on down there? Well, I'm down here uh, you know, just making sure that uh, the sand is abrasive is my main goal this week. Uh <laughs> I'm just making sure that the water was up to par. Uh, just making sure. I'm preparing our great state for the snowbird season. So I, I came down you just to, you know, I wanted to check everything out to make sure that, you know, we're not false advertising, that there really is a beach down here. The water is nice. Um, that That's my only thing. Uh, just okay. came down to make sure everything was good. It is. I guess. Well, we're getting ready to do our annual. We go, when you live on the beach, when you go on vacation, you just go to another beach. We're going over to uh, the Cape and Scallop this coming week. Scallop Where's that is at? so much fun. Cape Town Blast over by Fort St. Joe. All the uh, locals, what we do is the scalloping over there is done. Well, it's not as good as it used to be, but I hear it's going to be good this year. But it's like an Easter egg hunt. We took our kids all our lives. We'd take a week 
and go over there and you catch these, you know, these little bay scallops. They, they taste real good, but it's, you know, you swim around in waist deep water and you pick them like like Easter eggs. And it's really you find seahorses, you find all kind of stuff in the grass. But it's yeah, it's fun. Kids love it. Now our kids are all grown, and so me and my buddy from Birmingham, he's coming down with his wife. We've got a house for four or five days. We're going to do that before football season. Okay. For fun. Okay. Kids, Triple tails and tarpon, you know, just have a good four or five days there. Will you carry uh, your boat, or will you just go by your? Yeah. Uh, oh no, you, okay. no, I, you got to have your boat. I'm on. I'm on to catch some triple tails. There's triple tails, and they're just tarpon. Over all these tarpon are stacking up over there now, getting ready to head south. So we'll catch some tarpon too. Just you know, just play around and get our Nothing minds wrong off with that. Of this. S- sounds like now, a pretty good week yeah. right there, my friend. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I'll send you some pictures. All right. So I listen to you, you little man. I I keep I always want to ask you, and I think a lot of times you sit here and listen to us giggling because you're going to practice and you're seeing it. We're all having to rely on you for, you know, for for seeing things, you know, not just reading. And I, um, you know, I, you've asked your question. I, I again, I think we're going undefeated. I think worst case scenario, we lose one game, and I. Ryan, I just I feel like when you start looking through the things, like uh, they interviewed Haynes this this week. He said he spent the whole summer learning the playbook. He knows everything he's supposed to do and what everybody else is supposed to do. Did you pick that up? I did. I listened to it last night yeah. again. Yeah. Uh, well, what I mean is, I mean, you go back to kids losing weight, forty kids that are running twenty miles an hour. I've never seen it. And again, that's what I wanted to ask you. You've been around Alabama for you know all these years with Nick. Have you seen a team in the summer this focused? No. An answer is no. I have not. Okay. Well, and then RJ wanted to throw up that these coaches that you know he wasn't impressed with our offensive coach. Well, he was with uh, Sheridan's been with uh, you know Kalen for for years now. He knows what kind of offense he wants to run. And uh, and and, I, and then one other question. I sit here and I get all kind of questions. I want to ask you. When you were in there watching practice the other day, do you watch? Did you watch all the screen concepts that we that he runs compared to? We never ran a screen last year. There's a ton of them. A ton of them. There's a ton uh, of them. But but and, if you go back and watch any tape with UW on, you know, go back to UW or YouTube and uh, type in, you know, UW against Oregon or UW against Oregon State yeah. or UW against uh, whoever. Uh, they they do a lot of screen, um, a lot. Well, what, and, and my number one prep this week was Alabama's offense can beat you a lot of different ways. I really yeah. believe that. I mean, they got a lot of different ways they can beat you. Yeah. Well, what impressed me was, uh, and I remember watching a video. You had, I think you'd been at the practice where they were running the screen and they're running a fake screen one way and throwing it the other way. And everybody's involved. They're throwing it to the tight end screens, wide, uh, wide receiver screens, running back screens. If you can't rush, our, uh, you can't uh, rush Jalen. You're going to have a problem because if you try to rush him too hard, they're going to they're going to screen you to death. I think it's going to be a cat and mouse game, and hey, they're going to have defenses on their tails. Well, and there was a, there was so many different times when you look back at Alabama's. They would find a play that would work, and then they would go away from it. Yeah, yeah. When I yeah, look back right. at Tommy Reese, it was almost like he was doing experiments. Okay, well, hey, let's try this. Oh, hey, it works. Good. We'll put that in the yes bucket. Hey, let's try this. It doesn't work. Well, hold on. Maybe we'll put that in the the maybe button. Um, that's what it is. Well, I mean, and go back to defense. You know, in a lot of people, we keep talking about well, Womack the defensive coordinator, but he bought that guy that his name, his last name starts with an M, I believe, and he's been his defensive coordinator for years. And he's there as, an, as a... No, it's, it's Chuck field. Morrell. Chuck Mor- Morrell, Morrell yeah. I think. Is, uh, he, I've heard him say it a little bit different, but it, it looks like, uh, yeah. So... Uh, well, they say he's a genius at defense. I mean, uh, DeBoer's... Well, and, and see, it. Keep, keep in mind, you also got to remember, um, when you look at this now an analyst can coach. So an analyst can coach. We ask, um, I'm trying to think who it was that was asked, but it was Kane Womack, not this past media availability, but the availability that we had last week. Not this week, but last week. He made that comment when you look back at, at kind of watching, 
you know, being able to use these analysts. Um, now he can coach inside backers, and and then you got Kane Womack that can go out here and coach other things. That's that's a big plus. So I know. there's a, I mean, there's a, a place like Alabama you can afford to go after the top of the top of analysts. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, have them as backup coaches. If we were lose, if we lose him, we got Morrell. He's not going anywhere. He loves DeBoer. Yeah. He stays with. Him. Yeah. But the last thing, uh, and one more thing, I know I got to get off here. You got getting ready to come up to a break. But uh, your gentleman from Mobile earlier today said he thought Texas was going to be something to, um, you know, was going to be a thorn in our side. And I go, but when you talk about buying players, look, Texas A and M and Texas both have been buying players for years. I I asked you earlier. DeBoer, when he walked in there, he said, I'm not paying players. That's all they got on us. You have to have a family atmosphere. I heard him again watching something this week where he said, this is going to be a player-led team. And it's just a different atmosphere. He didn't want the people that all they're after is money. And I think that's just bad. You can't buy a championship. Texas A&M couldn't, and, and, and Texas is not going to be able to either. And I agree, Stark is an offensive coordinator, but he's not a head coach. So. It's a great reminder when you look at Texas A&M. Yeah. They tried to do that buying a championship thing, didn't work out for them. It did not. I was up, I was up in North Carolina, Kobe fishing on the Outer Banks when all that happened. This year, I'll be listening to you every day in May when I'm up there. I carry your phone around. I carry the phone around nonstop with me now, so I can hear you all the time. Well, thank you, thank you, it, Wayne. We appreciate that, man. I appreciate you. All right, buddy. You have thank a good you. weekend. Hey, right back to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let me Roll remind up. you it is. Yeah, thank you, Wayne. We appreciate that. Nukes Eatery 205, University Boulevard 205-758-2455. The Nukes Q Sandwich, the number one sandwich across the franchise. You'll find it right there. The white barbecue sauce, the French dip sandwich, the great chicken salad, the pimento cheese. It is Nukes Eatery. Close enough that you can smell the championships. We roll on. We'll take more phone calls coming up in a couple of minutes. T Town Tide 100.9-1230 WTBC. Your home of Alabama Crimson Tide Sports. On the next Inside the Locker Room with Coach Wimp Sanderson and Barry Sanderson. Tune in Monday. We'll look back at the Alabama football scrimmage. We'll find out where the position battles are. Also, in the second hour, we'll talk with Doug Bell. We'll look at the FedEx Cup standings and find out who's advancing on to the next round. Plus, take your phone calls throughout the show. Inside the Locker Room, weekdays 7 to 9 a.m. on Tide 100.9 and Tide100.9.com. Tide 100.9 Traffic. Tuscaloosa traffic now from the Townsend Nissan Traffic Center. It is TGIF, and we're not doing terrible. However, we do have some slow rolls in the area right now. Moving on Lurleen Wallace, of course, you can always count on that. And in between 5th and McFarland Boulevard, you've got your bumper to bump or on and off the brakes. And McFarland joining in on the bandwagon with the east and westbound slows onto Lurleen Wallace. And moving on 69 southbound onto McFarland, that's heavy as well with your Tuscaloosa traffic now. Thomas. Don Wallace CPA, 527 Main Avenue in downtown Northport. Small business and personal income taxes, payroll, sales tax needs. They can also help you with nonprofit or church accounting or auditing in business since 1999. They work for you, not the IRS. When you take on taxes, you got to have someone on your side. It's Don Wattis. Bruin City Brewing Company on Saturday, August 24th. Doors open up at 3 p.m. Tickets are 10 bucks with proceeds benefiting the Tuscaloosa Metro Animal Shelter. Learn more at ashfest.org. Southern Owl House, 1530 McFarland Boulevard. As you know, it's one of my favorite places. Eat Southern, be Southern, the daily lunch and dinner specials, the great menu that features that Southern cuisine, like the bacon wrap meatloaf, the fish and taters, the biscuit sandwiches, the great steaks, the great chicken entrees, great sandwiches, including the pickle burger, the L House burger, the yard bird, great desserts, and always that featured bread pudding that Brett Garner's cooking up. Let Southern Owl House cater your... Code better for 15% off your first purchase. Love it or return it for free. That's L-U-M-E deodorant.com. Code better to save 15% today. Tide 100.9, Tuscaloosa weather. The sky partially sunny this afternoon. The chance of a few scattered strong storms through tonight. The high today, 95. The low tonight, 74. 
Tomorrow, a mix of sun and clouds with a few scattered showers and strong storms around. The high 93. I'm James Spann on the ABC 3340 Weather Center on Tide 100.9. You're listening to the best sports talk show, breaking down the Crimson Tide. The game with Ryan Fowler on your home for Alabama sports. Tide 100.9 and streaming on the Tide 100.9 app. game here in Tuscaloosa. I want to remind you about Northport Power Equipment, Northport Power Equipment, the Husqvarna dealer, the Echo Outdoor Power Equipment, the battery operated tools. You'll find those of both Crest and Husqvarna backpack blowers, handheld blowers, battery operated tools, all the weed trimmer string that you need, all the fuel, the oil, the mix. Uh, you'll find it at our good friends at Northport Power Equipment. It's 1996, two blocks east of the Northport Civic Center. We're going to roll on. Tony, get ready. We're coming to you in about two minutes right here. T-Town, Tide, 100.9, 1230, WTBC. Your home of Alabama Crimson Tide Sports. WTBC Tuscaloosa and W265CG Tuscaloosa, a Town Square media station. Tide 100.9 and streaming on the Tide 100.9 app. From the Fox Sports Studios in Los Angeles. Here's Isaac Lowenkron. At Wrigley Field today, the Chicago Cubs blew a 5-2 ninth inning lead against the Blue Jays, who scored three runs at the top of the ninth inning to tie it. The Cubs would go on to win it, however, on Seiya Suzuki's RBI double in the bottom of the tenth inning, 6-5. In the NFL, the Minnesota Vikings officially placed rookie quarterback J.J. McCarthy on season-ending injured reserve and signed free agent quarterback Matt Corral. McCarthy was recently diagnosed with a torn right meniscus. Corral spent time with the New England Patriots last season and most recently played in the UFL this spring. NFL media reports Bengals place kicker Evan McPherson has agreed to a three-year, $16.5 million extension. Chargers quarterback Justin Herbert is out of his walking boot. He had been in the booth the past two weeks because of a right foot injury and is expected to be ready for the start of the regular season on September 8th. For over five years in our community in downtown Northport under that Roll Tide Bridge, Mark's Mark, the home of the chicken swirl. You'll find that since 1978 in Selma, Alabama for over five years in downtown Northport. If you want to dominate the grill today or any day, Find Mark's Mark. A great stop by on your way home if you're preparing for dinner. They've got a lot of those gourmet dishes that you can find. The great casseroles, the dips, the appetizers, the great steaks, the pork chops, the burgers, and all the supplies you need to dominate the creation. Experience the wow factor. Contact Shoot Masonry and Specialties at 205-887-3807 today and unleash your home's full potential. Alabama Credit Union with the official countdown to Alabama Crimson Tide football Right here on the game, alabamacu.com. The mobile app saves a lot of time. The mobile deposits, checking, savings, mortgage, home equity loan, financing a vehicle, the great competitive rates, Alabama Crown slash deal or text deal to 511-511. Text deal to 511-511 today. All dogs are unique. Your dog results can and will vary. Message and data rates may apply. Rumsey Environmental, a one-stop shop serving West Alabama for all of your waste removal needs. If you're in the construction business, take a little bit of stress out of your life. The construction debris removal containers customized to fit your job site, the portable toilet service the storage containers to protect your valuables it's rumsey environmental for that complete waste removal service when you have to visit us at 3537 skyland boulevard east or check us out online bmw of tuscaloosa.com bmw of tuscaloosa take your dreams for a drive Backwood. 
woods, Tennessee byway. One arm on the wheel, holding my lover with the other. A sweet, soft southern thrill. Worked hard all week, got a little jingle. On a Tennessee Saturday. All right, let's count them together. You guys ready? Couldn't feel better. National titles. Oh, yeah. 30 SEC titles. 147 first team All American. 77 postseason appearances. 45 postseason victories. Four Heisman winners. The NCAA All Time scoring leader. And the greatest football coaches to ever walk the sidelines. We are talking a little Alabama Crimson Tide football, and we are taking your phone calls. And we are right here on a free-for-all Friday sponsored by Brian Harden Construction. ASME certification, I-beam installation, fabrication. If you're building for the ground up, let's build something together. We are now 15 days away, 15 days away. Even our Auburn friends know tomorrow will be two weeks away from Alabama Crimson Tide Football. Brought to you by Alabama Credit Union. Let's continue with more phone calls. Tony, good afternoon. Tony, you're in the game. I hope all is well. (laughs) <laughs> Roll Tide. Namaste. 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 Oh, yes. Oh, yes. yes hey, I've, got uh, my, uh, I've been getting my yin get, and my yang every morning. I've been going out on the beach with my yoga mat. Uh, yeah. about, about 5.30 as the sun comes up nice. in the east. Yeah. I feel so you, much better. Fowler's yoga crack. I'm going to tell you, that's something I bet that's amazing out there. I bet that's, Actually, uh, I do the yoga pants. The uh, seagulls. Yeah. I've got the yoga pants. Is, that's uh, what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Been to that, doing mean, the stretch, good stretch. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Who, who's but, uh, behind you? That's what I want to know. Snowbirds. When you're snowbirds. They're, they're just Ooh. jealous of my flexibility. Oh, wow. That's, uh, that's the way I started Friday right there. Uh, Fowler stretching. And, and, you know, you got to, you know, probably smells like Taco Bell behind Fowler. I know it smells like, uh, I know it would smell like Southern Ale House. Might still, but I, I don't know. You know, I, I've, I've been missing Southern Ale House. I think I've lost six pounds this week. <laughs> I bet you have. I bet they can't wait to get you back. Uh, probably, <laughs> yeah, maybe. Hey, we got a, hey, on a serious point, man, we got a storm pulling a Kamala up here. I mean, really? seriously. Right yeah, now, it's it just yep, it's blowing its way through town right now. Really, uh, mm-hmm. but I bet it, I bet if you ask the storm, uh, it would say the opposite of whatever it is. So if it's raining, it's sunny. Uh, is that what they would they would say? I mean, I, I, I don't know. I mean, if you're gonna, I mean, if you're gonna accuse it to be in Kamala, uh, it's got to be the opposite. So well, it can't this be a is what storm. I do know to see what can be. Unburdened. You know, that's a that's really a tearjerker when she says that. It can be, or it can be funny. Hey. You see what could be? Unburdened. I think yeah, I pulled we, a hand. Yes, we do. We do. But but Your it is. Both are strained. Yeah. Yeah. That's. Um, <laughs> mm. But well, I was I was hoping that you could give me the cliff note cliff notes version <laughs> of the economic yeah. uh, game plan because I know. Yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. Well, well, look. Well, look. It's pretty simple. It costs more. Next. Oh. <laughs> Yes, it does. Price, yes, it does. Prices are higher. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> uh, hey, oh, I'm can gonna, we please hey, talk football? I hate no, this. No, I hate no, doing no, this. No. I mean, hey, oh, listen, look at you. No, 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 no. 
came on, and then the caller goes, go. Then the Listen. other one behind me is like, I hate Tony. I hate Tony. And you're okay. like, no, no, but, no, 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 more. But – Listen, if if I was if I was Donald Trump's team <laughs> during the debate, I would say yeah. no laughing. Okay, no audience, but no <laughs> laughing. You cannot laugh during the debate, and you cannot say you have seen <laughs> unburdened. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Can't say that. Oh, she would go into a pretzel. She'd get. She literally. Pull in to pull herself into a pretzel on the stage. Yes, she would. Yes, she would. Let's talk football. Let's uh, thank you. Thank you, my God. I hate Tony. I hate people talking politics. I'm, I'm right. You just soak in the flames. Anyway, what do you want well, to talk I, about? Every time you want I to ask me these, some questions? Every time you want I get me one to ask these, you questions? Well, every time I get one of these, these negative messages uh, from our friends. <laughs> Did you just get list, one? No, I got one get the one? other day after your call. I got a big one. Uh, yeah, it was it was good. good. So I just I hope yeah, it I hurt. Was, I hope it stung. I mean, I hope it stung. Go ahead. No, I'm hey, just who saying was the so. guy that called after me last time? That was AJ. Jr. Oh, went Jr. Okay, now look, this isn't an anti. You know, this is. Uh, I know someone who, uh, well, my ex-wife uh, went through vertigo and was later properly diagnosed as of having Meniere's disease. And actually the person who first uh, identified in all Meniere's disease is, a, is, is an older man and his son, and they're in Mobile, just to let people know out there, if you're going through something like that, and that is an awful way to live. And I just want to put that out there. I hope I hope he uh, maybe if he doesn't, if he's new or what's going on or whatever, and taking in the Meniere's disease, uh, I highly recommend it. It's a very very difficult thing to identify, but does it? I work? know life. I mean, did it work? Uh, yes, 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 yes. Well, they had to remove part of her eardrum. They had okay. to, you know, and she has a cochlear implant now, which she didn't for a very long time back behind there. But it was because she got it when she was young, and it and it extremely uh, it'll ki- it, 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 it'll destroy the ear, the inner ear, and all, and it, it goes really rapid on young people, and and moves much slower with more mature people. So that's the good news for Jr. is that he didn't sound like a, a teen when he called. So I'm sure it's some news, but I know it's very difficult. You just lie down and just hope it, it ends and it can last days. And hey, man, if he wants to, if, if helping him is coming down hard on me, that's fine. But I'm sorry. And I, I know any little thing can irritate someone when they're going through stuff like that. It's awful. So anyway, well, my, my JR, wife experienced I hope, that I hope, a, a couple of weeks ago and and she went yeah. to the ear nose throat doctor and they that's right she she said something about crystals growing in her ear and they broke the crystals and uh-huh. it, really? it went away wow yeah it went, it went away that amazing so yeah but well, um, there's another thing jr to look into crystals I growing in I your ear yeah. so well you know uh, well you know when i was a kid i know i had carrots growing in my ear what about you well, I mean, I was some potatoes. Uh, I think I might have had some potatoes growing in my ear too, according to my grandmother. Yeah, 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 yeah. But um, um, okay, you ready to talk football? Yeah. Who's okay, asking you said, who? You go. You who's asking yeah, I mean, who um, questions? We're going to alternate. Yeah. What well, we I, let's it? let's go back to uh, Tommy and <clears throat> Romulus's rant on tickets. Did you uh, Did you hear that, Tony? No. I mean, that's not football. Let's talk football. Well, no, I mean, he, he Sorry went about off that, on, Tommy he, Thunder. He went off on the university. I mean, he he lit him up for uh, losing his tickets. and uh, He lost uh, his tickets? What, well, they, they, lost, they lost his tickets, but uh, they've been able to find him. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, okay. so he is uh, – but he said his brother may never go back out there. I mean, I saved Tommy from becoming an Auburn fan earlier. I mean, it was that well, bad. Yeah. Bless you. Bless you. Yeah. Yeah. Tommy I mean, Thunder. He get it, I, Tommy Thunder can get a little emotional. Yeah. Know? Can well, we admit I, that? 
I'm and doing we admit the Lord's, that between I'm doing you and the me, Lord's work. Yes, you are doing yes. the Lord's work. Yeah, Go yeah, ahead. yeah. All right. So, uh, second scrimmage. Um, yeah. Is, uh, are you guys? Are you are allowed? You invited? Are you going? Uh, uh, I don't think so. Okay. I've heard. Okay. I have not heard yet. Have you? No. No. It's 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 a it's a no no. Yeah. No. You're, you're not going to be. That's what. There. Yeah. No press at all. You know. I you guys should have never slide in. You. you well, I was talking about the Red Alpha Club. You guys should have never put those videos out. Well, you know, that's what the problem when you're involved in a group. You know what I mean? One, yeah, yeah. Don't let, you know, what was the song? Don't let one bad apple fool the whole bunch. I'm in a group of 330 you, million Americans. I hope we can make the right decision. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah, so I mean, I, I know right. what it's like to be in a group that doesn't want to do the right that's thing. Right. So yeah, that's so right. I'm, I'm fully aware. All right, so, or, 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 uh, or I know of a group. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, at least right, I don't ahead. know. It, it may be a so fake group. You keep group, going politics. You keep going politics. Everyone's going to blame me. That was not me. Everyone's going to blame me. What are you? What are you excited to hear about this first scrimmage? What do you want to hear? Oh, we've already had the first scrimmage. I'm sorry, second scrimmage. Second and final scrimmage. You got to tighten up, Fowler. If you're going to be the biggest thing, you know, and all that, you can't be, you know. Come on. Try it again. Okay. Try it again. Okay. So what are you excited to hear about this second scrimmage? What do you want to hear? What do you want to hear? Because I'm I'm going to tell you some negative. Not one injury. Okay. Okay. So you're you're like Kaylin DeBoer. That's what he said last week. Absolutely. Well, I've no been interest. saying it for years. I've been saying it for okay. decades. If I've been what, saying it for longer well, than now a decade. It may be, it may no be more one can than... beat a hel- no one can beat a healthy Alabama. Period. All right. So you want to hear me uh, hear some concerns that I heard this morning? Because I've, I've I been would. searching. Of course. Yeah. Um, hey, hold on, hold on, just a second. Fowler. Hey, I was wondering. Have you heard anything that might concern you lately about this? Uh, I hear the field goal kicker is uh, needs some work. Head case already. Uh, we've had a few. We've I'm definitely not, had I'm some not, big time I'm kickers not, that ended up being. I did not say that. I just the said uh, there's been more misses than I'm comfortable with. Let me just say that. That's right. Um, hey, it's the time to get them out of your system, right? 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 Positive it is. energy, right? Okay. Right? Yeah. Namaste. Namaste. All right. All right. What else? Yeah. Yeah, he, he may need to come down here and get his yin and his yang together. So He um, might need his yin yang and his yang yin. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That may be the problem. Uh, <laughs> or but, uh, but, and, Come on, Wyatt. Uh, his <laughs> yin and his yang may have... <laughs> his yin might have got too much yang and his yang might have got a little too much yin and... Yeah, Is that what yeah, you're saying? That's what I'm saying. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's what you I'm saying. You got to dial right, so, it back. Moderation's but, the key to the life. Go ahead. But um, Namaste. <laughs> but it is, um, yeah, I mean, it's a little bit of a concern uh, from a, okay, from let's a move negative on standpoint. Past kickers. Okay, all right, let's move past kickers. Kickers! kickers. Um, all right, what's that? What's that? Come on, Fowler. I hear, I hear they worked on some good fake field goals today in case, it you know, we have like to run. like we need to. <laughs> yeah. yeah, could be, could be, could be. Um, like, uh, after a few days of practice and kicking, we decided to start working a little bit more on fake kicking. Yeah, just just kind of implementing. Um, I hear Rod Tackle, because I think they thought Elijah Pritchett was going to be able to win this job at Rod Tackle. No, and, no, 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 no. It's a Taco Casa, a Tommy Tuesday going on out there, is it not? Yeah. And and Wilkin Formby said, "Not so fast, not so That's fast." That's right. Um, That's right. Homeboy, yeah, shout out North burgers, Ridge. Yeah, oh. they, they give you a little. Mm, yeah, they do. They do. Oh yeah, uh, we got to, hey, go in there and order the big four. What is it? The something four? What is it? The Formby four? Yeah, uh, Sancho, right? Sancho. No. Uh, I can't remember everything. You I don't just go to a ball. We got people wait. You okay. Come on, you. you all right, so you're so, hearing Fowler. That's a, I mean, you're hearing the same thing I'm hearing is that we might have a little local flavor starting at right tackle. Yeah. 
So he's busted his butt. He's been able to improve right. uh, significantly. And, uh, you know, I, I think Brent Beard started the show talking about David Ballou. Um, yeah. There is oh, yeah. no doubt oh, a transformation yeah. from a physical size. And I think you don't have to look any uh, further than, than Will conform me. And I almost asked the question here. Did Saban not fully give Matthew Ballou um, the opportunity to implement his entire system? Because from where they were at in January to where they were at in the spring to where they're at now in August, it doesn't even look like the same football team. I mean, Jalen Miller. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm going to interrupt you real quick. I, I, I must admit, why we went with the giant offensive line last year was, is one of will be one of the all time head scratchers, right? And I would decisions. love to know off you agree? record. I would love to know off record whose idea was it That's to right. get to the biggest offensive line in college football That's in right. the NFL. Period. Who who's was That's right. Where'd that come from? Where did that come I, from? I agree I don't completely. Know. Okay, let's be I, I, great, great. Great one right there. All right. Uh, the next thing I want to uh, – you hold, hold on. Who's asking now? Yeah, oh, you got more. You got more. No, no, I'm done. I'm done. That's all. No more me? That's it? Okay. No, I, I haven't talked to my source. You want me to you want me to I haven't talked to my up? source. I haven't talked to my yeah. source here lately, but I'm, yeah. I'm going to because uh, we've got a couple of days off. So Monday at 2, I should have you some good meat and potatoes. So what you're saying is sometime around noon you're happy you get the milkshake? The milkshake guy, Jax, is not what he used to be with so much access, but he's really close to being there. He's really good, though. We hadn't been there all week. So you got to come by, get your milkshake, get caught up. Get, oh, get, no, no, get, no, get no, no. He, he, he sends me messages. Yeah. Oh, he does. Oh, mm-hmm. he got, yeah, yeah. are y'all crazy? You know you know the phone company and the federal uh, – and the intelligence well, you heard, agency, you they're, they're what reading happened. everything yeah. you're texting. Yeah, well, you heard what happened to Paul. I mean, Paul started, and they got it. They got it. I mean, we we haven't, we don't know Shout what happened. Shout out to Paul. Paul. Keep embracing the suck, Paul. Well, we know what happened. He took one off the ear. That's exactly what happened. Yeah. You know well, what happened. I mean, I'm worried about Paul. Fight, fight, fight. That's, That's Paul right, right there. That's right. Can't you see Paul going, fight, 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 after getting bit by a mosquito on the ear? Yeah, I, I just, if if we're this way in August, where will yeah. we be in October? No, I mean, I could be, be sitting here trying it's, to break it's beyond down. a bowling point, you know. Hopefully football yeah. will, will work to calm everything going on. All okay. right, so I'm hearing some, if I can say, or whatever going through on here. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't know. I, you know, right now, outside of running backs, pretty healthy room, right? we got to keep the whole locker room healthy. I mean, knock on wood. Doing. That's right, knock on wood. And uh, I, you know what? And You know what? I think Kalen DeBoer understands that. I think, I think when he said that the other day, to me, that tells me that the practices are probably going to be start becoming a lot similar to that, and let's keep our people healthy. I think I think if we can get through this scrimmage right here, then we're going to we know who our starting lineup is, which I think we know who that is anyway. And I think Will Conform be as you just broke on on global radio here will be the starting right tackle. You broke that just a few minutes ago. Uh, right here on the game. I think uh, I, I, I think he's going to have a healthy team to start that's not been overworked. And hopefully as we go through the season, you know, it seemed like Alabama would, like, break down at times. You know what I mean, physically? Under Coach Saban? That's right. Are you there? Yeah, no, no, I mean – no, I'm listening have, have to you. Have you gone I mean, to I, sleep? I do. Uh, well, no, no, I was, uh, I was I, I, checking. I really think that, you know, this is really to me like a divi- – it's like the passing of the torch or whatever from old school to more of a new school in, in, in everything. 
You know, I mean, it's like it, it, it needed to happen, I guess. We'll find out. I hope it's going to be successful. I fully expect it to be unbelievably successful. But, you know, I think he really is. Like, do you think Saban was ever in his mind thinking about practicing and scrimmaging about we've got we, we got to make sure and tone this thing down and not put kids in situations where kids can get where, where our players can get injured? Or do you think he was playing? We're playing the game. We're running the plays and we're going to get it like this. And this is how football is all about. I, I think his system is better because I, I I mean, you could look at the chemistry that they've been able to build. How do you keep players attached to a program? You create relationships, authentic relationships, whether it's – and it's even beyond that, right? It's the way that they manage this roster. We don't know until we go through a full season, but it seems like from our perspective, he is a step ahead. He is um, – I mean, his system works. I mean, just like R.J. Young yesterday – or excuse me, earlier today. Uh, when you look at the record, you can't argue. I mean, 104 well, 12. Uh, it's, you know, it, it, it's overwhelming. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm still. Kalen's got to prove it. He's got to prove. He does. He, he does. He's TJ at pharmacy at Midtown worthy. Yep. So he's got to prove that. I, I got to get to this break because uh, Jackson. Are you pro- God, I mean, this thing's gone on forever. I mean, yeah, yeah, this yeah. is a well, really long well, call. Yeah. I mean, even and I almost went sleep. Bamanick just told me to uh, <laughs> stick it where it didn't snow. So, uh, yeah, I was just reading that. So, I, I, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> called up Friday. <laughs> <laughs> was he on hold for about an hour and a half? <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> hey, tell him to call back in. You've talked to the people like you did today. You got some extra time set up for him. Call in and yeah. let her rip on a freak flag Friday. Hey, namaste, everybody. Hey, the pharmacy in Midtown, TJ Thomas, TJ Thomas, 205-752-0627. The pharmacy at Midtown, the only sterile compounding facility here in Tuscaloosa. All the compounding needs, a full-service independent pharmacy. We also have delivery. We have the retail side of the pharmacy at Midtown, TJ Thomas, the pharmacy at Midtown, the pharmacy at Midtown. Hey, Tony, have a great weekend, man. Same to you. Enjoy the beach and your vacation. Roll Tide, everybody. No. We'll, yep, we'll continue with more of the game next. Tide 100.9-1230 WTBC. Your home of Alabama Crimson Tide Sports. West Alabama real-time news update from the Tuscaloosa Thread Newsroom. Concerns about the intense heat levels have prompted the extension of the heat advisory for Alabamians. Plus, you can factor in the potential for damaging winds this weekend as well. For the full details on the weather outlook for West Alabama, be sure to tap the free Tuscaloosa Thread app. And exciting news for the Alabama Crimson Tide football program. Three offensive linemen and a surprise defender were named to the Lombardi Award presented to the top line in college football. Get 24-7 local news coverage and sports updates when you download the free Tuscaloosa Thread app and sign up for twice daily email newsletters. Tide 100.9 Traffic. Tuscaloosa traffic now from the Townsend Nissan Traffic Center. Definitely beefing up your TGIF evening with an accident on McFarland on the westbound lanes right after 26th Avenue. Now this is blocking a lane and it's got traffic major heavy back to 69 and Lurleen Wallace. Lurleen Wallace northbound hookup. It's a qualifying new line for well-qualified customers plus tax and $35 device connection charge. Contact us before canceling entire account to continue remaining bill credits. Bill credits end if you pay off device early. See details at T-Mobile.com. Dos Amigos, Highway 69 in the New Public Shopping Center. 11 a.m. opening, 10 p.m. Friday and Saturday closing at 9, Sunday through Thursday. Some great Mexican cuisine, the great fajitas, the great desserts, the great lunch specials. You'll find it at Dos Amigos in the Public Shopping Center on Highway 69. Take out order. Assist you with all of your CPAP needs, including the new Luna Travel CPAP. Call 339-8013 or stop by MedSouth in the North Brook Plaza on McFarland. Boulevard. The game is powered by Tuscaloosa Toyota, TuscaloosaToyota.com. David DeSantis, the largest selection of new Toyotas in over three years can be found on Skyland Boulevard, 3325 Skyland Boulevard. Also a nice inventory of pre-owned inventory. You can find the new Tundra, the 2024, the Tacoma two-wheel drive, 
four-wheel drive. How about a new Forerunner, Highlander, RAV4, Camry, Corolla? For those outside of Tuscaloosa, save money by... You really want to know what it's like to run with us. You just have to get in the seat. Learn more at johndeere.com slash get in the seat or visit a dealer near you. Tide 100.9, Tuscaloosa weather. The sky partially sunny this afternoon. The chance of a few scattered strong storms through tonight. The high today, 95. The low tonight, 74. Tomorrow, a mix of sun and clouds with a few scattered showers and strong storms around. The high, 93. I'm James Spann on the ABC 3340 Weather Center on Tide 100.9. The best breakdown of Alabama football in the state. The game with Ryan Fowler. On your home for Alabama sports. Tide 100.9 and streaming on the Tide 100.9 app. downtown Northport under that Roll Tide Bridge. If you want to dominate the grill today or any day, it's Mark's Mark in downtown Northport. Uh, they'll have the grill cooking tomorrow. If you're looking for chicken, if you're looking for seafood, uh, they've got uh, the home of the chicken swirl, which uh, is what they're famous for. 1978 in Selma and five and a half years in downtown Northport. They deal with a high choice, which is the top 10% of choice, you'll find it at Mark's Mark, 1978 in Selma, Alabama, five and a half years in downtown Northport. Also, uh, if you've got the dairy that's out in Pickens County, they can you can find that milk there. Uh, it's more than just meat, right? Casseroles, dips, appetizers, cakes, pies. Uh, you'll find the great cheesecake. Yep, that cheesecake is available at Mark's Mark in downtown Northport. Max and Tupelo, get ready. We're coming to you next. T-Town, Tide. 100.9-1230 WTBC. Your home of Alabama Crimson Tide Sports. It's the year-end clearance sale at Townsend Nissan going on now. You can save thousands. See BJ or Kylan today at Townsend Nissan, your savings place. DanielMoreArt.com. Daniel Moore Art celebrates those special moments of Alabama football history like 4th and 31, Jalen Milrow connected with Isaiah Bond, or the legacy continues with all the great memories of Alabama Crimson Tide football. You can celebrate Coach Saban with a Nick Saban print, the limited edition canvas. You could also find many of the great mini prints. Celebrate that special Alabama fan in your services. Call Oxone Services today at 205-979-0946 or visit Oxone Services. The Pharmacy at Midtown with T.J. Thomas, 205-752-0627, PharmacyMidtown.com. Don't forget about the retail side of the Pharmacy at Midtown. It's an independent-owned pharmacy specializing in walk-in prescriptions, medicine-on-time packaging. With the reliability of natural gas with rebates up to $800 from Spire when you switch from electric. To learn more, visit SpireEnergy.com slash reliable. You're listening to the home of Alabama Crimson Tide Sports. Tide 100.9. You know, I'm starting to think this is you guys' favorite song. I, I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm wrong. But um, I'm, I'm starting to think that uh, waiting on the world to change. Uh, I'm, I'm waiting on the world to change on a free-for-all Friday here in Tuscaloosa. Brian Harden Construction, ASME certification, I-beam installation, fabrication. If you're building for the ground up, let's build something together. Uh, enjoyed uh, hanging out with the best fans of the country on a free-for-all Friday. And uh, we are we are taking your phone calls right here. Let's go to Max Tupelo. Max, good afternoon. You're in the game. Roll Tide, Ron Fowler. How you doing this Friday? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. Did you get that picture I sent you earlier? 
Oh, I don't know if I did. Uh, I don't know if I did. All right. Well, never mind. That's beside the point. So where we're uh, uh, Jake Coker days away right now, huh? We are 15 days away. 15 days away. Um, I thought Jake. I thought Jake wore 14. Did he not wear 14? He might have. Jake, I thought he did. Yeah. Okay, he well, did. Yeah, he did. Okay. Well, um, well Darius Hanks days away. How about that? There you go. I, I'll let you go. With, I'll let you buy with that one. There you go. All right. All right. All right. Dallas well, Turner. Uh, one Dallas Turner away. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you know, I hear all these guys and they're making these predictions. Um, and obviously, these are not Bama fans. I'm thinking that as far as what what's going to happen with us this year. It's like a lot of people, even though this is their profession, they're letting their wants and their emotions get in the way of the intellect of, of the ga- their their intellect of the game of what they want to happen to us. They want us going eight and four or nine and three instead of really looking at it and dissecting it and, and using their knowledge of the subject. They're letting the emotions get in the way. And I got to thinking, you know, they they keep talking about how young we are here or there, and yes, we do have some young players in certain spots, but. And it's mainly defensively that they're talking about. But if you look at the backbone of our defense and right up the middle of our defense, in the back end, Malachi Moore, the guy that calls the shots, veteran, played a lot of football. Uh, Deontay Lawson, Jihad Campbell, in the middle uh, of the middle of our defense, they've uh, they played a lot of football. They're they're leaders. Uh, they're mature. Jaheim Otis, Tim Keenan played a lot of football right there in the middle. So you're sprinkling in. Uh, extremely physically gifted players, albeit young, around the very center of your defense that calls the shots uh, that are veterans. Uh, so I, I don't think the learning curve is going to be as great because this scheme we're running this year, there's you don't have to do near as much thinking pre-snap. It's not near as complex. So a younger player can uh, can actually get acclimated a lot quicker, especially when he's got a guy in the middle that's a veteran and, and a, a leader. Uh, calling the shots. What what are you thinking? You know, but th- there's so many different elements to this. I mean, a- as you you mentioned, I mean, there this defense is going to look different. They're going to take chances. They're going to come after you. But I think they're going to they're going to play with more confidence. I don't think it's as confusing. And right. the communi- they're going the communi- to play loose. Yes, yes. I, and, and use just your athletic ability. But I almost think that you have to do that. Do you not? I mean, I, I think yeah, this current, we can't go around and teach, you know, like a Marlon Humphrey. Marlon Humphrey is one of the greatest players currently in the National Football League. He's in the top 100, right? Top player, yeah. one of the top players at his position. He yep. didn't even play. Why did he not play his first year? It is complexity of the system. You're right. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, dude, the athletes we got, like, especially at corners, Avian Brown and Bakway, and even the, the transfer, uh, two transfer kids, Damani Jackson. I mean, that kid was the number one corner in the country coming out of high school. And, and I think that Deshaun Jones kid, he's played a good bit of football for Wake Forest. Um, the physical ability's there. So if you can just let them just get out there and just play ball without having to think too much, which is kind of what this system is with um, – veteran leadership up the middle that are calling the plays and the, 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 um, you know, the audibles and shifts and things like that. I, I think we're going to be pretty dang good because you can't tell me that, uh, any other team in the country is more athletically gifted than we are at, at those uh, other spots on the defense. I mean, they may be as gifted, but not more. And, and I think when you look at the talent of this team, I think I, you're going to see stuff that we've never seen before, whether it's Malachi Moore. Um, I don't want to give too much away, but you're going to see some sack numbers by the defensive backs that we've not seen around here because they're going to yeah, bring the of, heat. Yeah, that's kind of what this scheme is predicated on. Um, dude, you get a corner like in Bakwe or, or Zabian Brown with that type of speed coming off the corner, a uh, quarterback's going to start uh, seeing uh, being deer in headlights pretty quickly. Yeah. So when you look at this, this defense, yeah, it's going to take some adjustments. But now also, let me back up. You're going to take so many chances that, to be fair now, to be fair, 
you're going to give up some plays too. We're going to give up some plays. We're going, going to, give up to some get. Plays. You're going to give up some plays. You will. I, yes, you I will. I think we got the type of offense that can make up for a big play that was let up by the defense, though. And you know, on that side. Look, your shot caller, Jalen Milrow, like, he's veteran. He's a leader. He's shown that by his actions and uh, verbally. Like, that dude has conducted himself like the way you want a captain to conduct themselves. Um, and, you know, so you got him. Uh, and, and then on the offensive line, you Booker, there's, 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 there's leaders everywhere. C.J. Dupree, leader in the tight end room. Uh, Kendrick Law, Kobe Prentice played a lot of ball. Leader in the wide receiver room, sprinkled with great talent. Um I, we, we have, I guess my point is we have leadership maturity in the spots you want them at. And, um, you know, even, even a guy like Ty Simpson, as long as he's been around, I guarantee you when he speaks, those younger players listen, even though he's not the guy that walks out there and takes the first snaps. If he goes to speak in something, I guarantee you they listen. So, I mean, we, we've got leadership maturity in all the right spots, and they seem to want to play for this guy, and they seem loose. They don't seem uptight, and it's guarded. And when you got a team with that type of ability, if you let them play loose, man, you know, the sky's the limit. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Hey, Max, I got to get to some other calls, man. I appreciate you as always. Okay, buddy. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. Let's go to Blueberry Steve, Montreal, Canada. Blueberry Steve, good afternoon. You're in the game. Hi, Ryan. How's the beach? Oh, it's good. It's good. It's still here. So... The uh, the music, the bumper music, is waiting on the world to change. You know, it sounds just like People Get Ready by the Impressions or Curtis Mayfield. I don't know if you know that song. Anyways, uh, listen to it. Kind of, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, it's, it's a great song. Very. Well, the very only thing I could think about is when it, wherever we play that um, Waiting on the World to Change, that was a previous uh, president's theme song. And every time they play it, I'm thinking, ooh, glory. We were sold change, and boy, it was change, all right. <laughs> right. Um, T-Town Tony, is that the guy who called a few minutes ago? Is it was, T-Town, T-Town Tony. Tony. Yeah, 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 that was T-Town Tony. He's my second friend on Facebook now. Really? You, you are my first friend. Yeah, yeah, you're my first friend, and he's my second friend. That's cool. <laughs> he's hilarious. I love him. Um, Paul is okay, by the way. Just to let you know, I texted him and. Uh, oh, he, Paul and is okay. So he's he's alive. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Paul and team missed their shot. They they got him in the other ear. Yeah. Damn it! They almost they were trying to take him out. They were trying to take I him know, out. They would love. To, I know they would love to take him out, but Mag is going to prevail. So, um, on the football side, just quickly before I get into my rant, and I want to be uh, quick about this. Uh, Bubba was right. You know, I, I hope that the coach does play a lot of second stringers in the early games, the cupcake games, because like, and I remember y- you made a, uh, you made a comment saying that it wasn't, uh, coach Saban that, that wanted to keep Tua in that Tua wanted to stay in. Cause that game in Starkville that he, Bubba was right. He had no business playing in that game at, at that point in the game. Anyway, right? you're right. You're, you're, you're spot on. Um, well, I mean, I'm just I mean, that that moment. Yeah. That moment hurt. still stings. I know. Oh, it hurts. Yeah, and and I'm just reinforcing Bubba's point. So, cousin Jumbo, he's always inspiring, and he'll always be welcome here. But as much with so much on the line, Ryan Maga has to prevail. Maga will prevail. American, you asked the question of Paul: Are Americans stupid? Americans aren't stupid. But with the corrupt mainstream press, Ryan, and the social media, MAGA, make America great again, making America great again won't be an easy lift. So, so we, all, we all have to pray. We all have to pray. Now, as, as, a, as a proud Canadian, and you know that Kraft MAGA John, my son, you, you met him, right? I did. Uh, he served. He served proudly in the uh, in the Canadian military for four years, and uh, we're both we're both proud Canadians, but we're also both huge fans of of the free and proud America. Because you know, let's not forget history. 
Brian. Let's not forget history. Um, if it wasn't for you guys, I mean, uh, we'd all be speaking German by now, you know, at this point. We would be. Hey, uh, you got several people that have asked me. Uh, tell me your, your Facebook account real quick. Uh, Steve Austin. And the Just picture I have up there, put up a picture. It's a picture of me uh, um, when I was uh, with the uh, um, in Hermosa Beach. Two pictures of me uh, riding my bike on Hermosa Beach. And I, I stopped and took the picture because I saw the Alabama Crimson Tide flag flying there. Okay. So okay, cool. I got it. I got that was, it. That was so cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh, you yeah, know, so I'm just going to – I've said this before. I'm going to say it again. Um, you know, I think it's really, really important that everybody, all people of good faith, have to pray for uh, for President yeah. Trump. I said it before, uh, Isaiah fifty four seventeen. You know, no weapons formed against you shall prosper. And Isaiah fifty four fifteen, Ryan. Whoever will gather against you will fail because of you. And that's really, really important. Blueberry Steve, I got to run, man. I appreciate you as always. I'm just about out of time, man. Thank you as always. Okay, God bless you, man. Roll tight and roll MAGA. Hey, it is a free-for-all Friday sponsored by Brian Harden Construction. We roll on. We'll take the final few callers next. T-Town Tide, 100.9-1230 WTBC, your home of Alabama Crimson Tide Sports. Tide 100.9 Traffic. Tuscaloosa traffic now from the Townsend Nissan Traffic Center. We're all jammed up on McFarland Boulevard right now. Moving in that westbound direction, you have a crash after 26th Avenue and just before 43. Do watch out for that. It's got you massive back to back past Lurleen Wallace. And Lurleen Wallace also having a t- deal or text deal to 511-511. Text deal to 511-511 today. All dogs are unique. Your dog results can and will vary. Message and data rates may apply. The best sports talk show in all of Alabama. The game with Ryan Fowler on your home for Alabama sports. Tide 100.9 and streaming on the Tide 100.9 app. The BMW Summer Sales Event is here. There's no better place to find your perfect ride than BMW of Tuscaloosa. BMW of Tuscaloosa, redefining the car buying experience with the customer first philosophy. We're driving satisfaction to new heights with an improved inventory that you can't miss. Now through August the 31st, enjoy unbeatable offers like interest rates as low as 2.99 and lease credits up to 9,900. BMW of Tuscaloosa is your destination for quality and value it is 3537 Scala Boulevard or check online bmwtuscaloosa.com. BMW of Tuscaloosa, your last new dealership. Let's continue. Pat, Tuscaloosa. Pat, good afternoon. You're in the game. Uh, I, had to, I had to get a hold of You got me now? Yeah, I can. Okay. I, I had to get a hold of uh, Martin Houston this morning to find out if he had any eligibility left. You realize we only got one running back available for tomorrow's practice? One. That's it, huh? Yep, everybody else is banged up 